The hues of autumn paint a landscape of seasonal change across College Park as two football programs vie to change their fortunes. It's the time of the year when aspiration meets determination. As the leaves continue to fall, hopes continue to rise for Clemson and Maryland and their brain trust. The Tigers began 1997 with visions of championships and elusive dreams snatched away by bitter ACC defeats, leaving Clemson on the brink of bull extinction and head coach Tommy West searching for answers. Maryland's offseason changes set the stage for the resurrection of a proud program. Despite the near misses, coach Ron Vanderlinden is encouraged that the Terps are on the cusp of a breakthrough. Clemson and Maryland next. to Bird Stadium on the campus of the University of Maryland in College Park. It's homecoming today for the Terrapins and they have a formidable opponent in Clemson. And here comes Maryland onto the field. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mark Jones. This is a day of urgency for both Clemson and Maryland, especially the Tigers, who must win four of their next five games to become eligible for a bowl. And last night, Tim Brand, I was speaking with Neil and Green of the Tigers at the hotel. He said, Mark, I don't want to be home for Christmas. Neil and Green is fun to watch. He's a quarterback that's been blessed with a strong arm and quick feet. This guy's a competitor. He completed 26 passes last weekend, but he's even more dangerous when he runs. So if you're going to try to pressure him on a pass play, you better come under control or he'll scramble past you. Now, Maryland has a completely different kind of quarterback. Brian Cummings is a fighter with a strong arm, one of the most ferocious competitors that you'll ever see. Cummings dares you to hit him, and he's still trying to make a big play, but he has never beaten Clemson. He has never scored a touchdown against the Tigers, and today he is surrounded with a lot of freshmen, young players. They're talented, but they've never even played Clemson. And for more on that, let's go down on the field. Here's Lewis Johnson. Well, Timmy, a group that has not been a, par a part of Clemson's domination is that Maryland freshman group. They have had a huge huge impact on the program here, scoring 40 of the Terps' last 47 points. Now, over the last two games, the Maryland offense has averaged 100 yards more per game than in their first five games. So today, I think it's wise of me to keep a close eye on this freshman group that Ron Vanderlinden expects him to continue to rebuild this program here at Maryland. Yeah, Lewis, you know, Coach Vanderlinden likes to preach to his entire team, especially the freshmen, that, hey, talent is great, guys, but we need reliability. He says, yeah, I need guys that I can count on. Ron Vanderlinden has sold his program to these young players, and they're still improving every week. But what they have to do now is avoid the big plays. They will have three or four good plays, then have a breakdown, and it's been killing them. Consequently, instead of being four and two or something like that, here they are. They're really struggling. Vanderlinden, the former assistant coach at Northwestern, in his first year on campus here at College Park. Maryland won the toss and will defer. They will kick off. That is Brad Rhodes, number seven, for the Terps. And back deep for Clemson, it's Tony Horn and Javis Austin. A low line drive kick. This is going to be Horn at the three-yard line. Horn got a bit of a seam out the outside, and Horn is brought down at the 37-yard line, a 35-yard return. Clemson will start on its own 37-yard line, and the quarterback, as we mentioned in the open, Neil and Green. As we look at the Chile starting lineup, the offensive line for Clemson, the biggest offensive line in school history, averaging over 304 pounds per man. Look at the receivers, led by Tony Horn, number seven. Green, Priester, and Sam Zanders gets the start today at the fullback spot. They have had some interesting problems at the fullback position. First down and 10 for the Tigers at the 37. Priester, the tailback out of the offset eye. Play fake. Green will pass and completes his pass for first down. Out at the 49-yard line. A 12-yard pickup to Tony Horn, number seven. Take a look defensively now at Maryland. Up front, Simmons, Hicks, Calcet, and the other Hicks at the defensive end. The linebackers, the strength of the team, especially number 44, Eric Barton. He's the team's leading tackler. Cornerback, a key spot for Maryland this afternoon. They'll be tested early and often. First and 10 from midfield. Priester between the tackles, gaining about three yards on first down. That right there is a play you're going to see a lot of today. They want to get back to Raymond Priester running the football. He had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. He's the only guy at Clemson to do that. And Clemson wants to get him the ball, 20 to 25 carries today. 
And that's going to test that guy right there, 44, Eric Barton. So every time Priester runs, Barton's going to be trying to follow him. But they want to get back to that situation where they can get the good ground game, which will also open up the passing game. Priester, Tim, holds 12 Clemson rushing records. And here he is again on second down, cuts back, has another first down, still on his feet, finally brought down at the 33-yard line of Maryland by Troy Davidson and Lewis Sanders, a 13-yard pickup for Raymond Priester. I want you to watch Roundtree, Bostell, and Gamble open up this hole. That's going to be a pitch. Watch the right side of your screen. Here they come. Look at the hole. Nobody's there. Even the linebackers picked up. Great cutback. Uses the umpire as a block, and then finally gets into the secondary. But Priester's got to run the boards now to get another 1,000-yard season. He's got to get 100 yards every game, and they think it's possible to do it. First down and 10. Knows the ball to the 33-yard line. It's Raymond Priester again. This time tripped up. Keeps his balance. Bounces outside. Has one man to beat. Almost got to the corner. Has another first down to the 21-yard line. Davidson roughs him up, pushes him out of bounds, but not before a 12-yard pickup by number 27, Raymond Priester. Again, there's no perimeter control by Maryland. You see Barton right there, 44, gets cut off by Roundtree. Once that happens, look, they get out on the edge. Now the cornerback gets cut off, 36 is the safety. Now all of a sudden, when Jackson gets beaten, Priester picks up the, the yardage and moves the chains again. Priester has rushed three times for a total of 29 yards here in the early going. Clemson on its opening drive of the ball game. Priester again. Breaking tackles down to the 14-yard line. Raymond Priester, an improved player this year all around. Brought down by Johnny Hicks. You know, the last two seasons, Priester ran besides Emory Smith, Emmett's brother. And Smith was a punishing blocker and a big threat as far as running the ball as well, which took some of the heat off Priester. Well, now they don't have that. Witherspoon and Xanders are the fullbacks. They're not great big guys. They're 210 and 235, but he really hadn't had healthy fullbacks, much less big fullbacks that have paved the way for him. That really helps. He's getting it so far in the early going. Priester runs over the left side of the line over Hulsey and Bundren. He'll be close to a first. I don't think he got it, so it'll bring up a third down situation. And Maryland now has got to get its act together. They're going to be trailing in a ball game one spot once again. And when that happens, you can't get into your game plan sufficiently. You know, for this guy right here, Ron Vanderlyn and the Maryland Terrapins, to have any success at all, they have to play 11 guys as one. One heartbeat on the same page, know what everybody else is doing, and play like wild men. They can't catch blocks. They've got to attack. Hoping to enjoy an early measure of success right now under siege, and Nealon Green steps back and calls a timeout for Clemson. Green didn't like what he saw at the line of scrimmage and uses the team's first timeout. There's Tommy West in his fourth year as head coach for the Clemson Tigers. Told us before this game that mentally his team is a little bit fragile, and we need something good to happen today. Clemson has enjoyed a lot of success against Maryland in recent history. For example, as our Marriott moment last year at Clemson's Bird Field. Pardon me, it was actually a game that was at Memorial Stadium. Marked the first time in four games that Maryland scored any kind of points off Clemson. That field goal by O'Donnell. Ball was actually tipped. Clemson went on to win the game, though, 35 to 3. Yeah, you have to go all the way back to 1992 to find Maryland's last touchdown against Clemson. That's not something Ron Vanderlyn is real proud of, although he just took over this year. So he's not concerned about past seasons. He's concerned about success play to play right here at Maryland. Now, for that guy, Tommy West, he was a heck of a player. Tennessee came in here. You know, he was a defensive coach under Danny Ford. He knows how to, how to put defenses together, and he's put some pretty good offenses together. And his team's trying to rebound. He's always strong near the end of the year. And yeah, they've had a week off. And this is traditionally the time of the year where they make their move. Sanders and Priester out of the offset on. Third down and one. It's Priester. And it looks like he has the first down. Yeah, he's got it right near the 10-yard line. Just barely got it. Chris Jenkins, 57 submarine. And they came in a short yardage defense, goal line type defense where the defensive linemen try to get as low as they can and penetrate and let the linebackers fill. Got there, but just a little bit too late. So the move the chains. Now Clemson's got first down, and I believe can still get a first down before they score inside the one. Clemson first in the ACC in first downs and time of possession. When you run the ball as much as they are now, you're going to lead in time of possession. Chewing up time on the clock right now. Priester, touchdown, Tiger. 
Tigers. Boy, they made that look easy. It was methodical and on time. On cue, Raymond Priester runs it in. And Clemson leads 6-0. I'll tell you what, give the guys up front a lot of credit. Stop it right there. Look at the running lanes this guy has. I mean, all he has to do is just get in here, go over here, anywhere he wants, and he's got a touchdown virtually untouched. Offensive line with Gamble, Roundtree, Postel. Those guys opened up huge holes for Raymond Priester, who's a talented running back. Priester ran the ball seven times for a total of 51 yards. The extra point by David Richardson is good. And the Clemson Tigers, after a week off, Look revitalized and refreshed, led by number 27, Raymond Priester. They take a 7-0 lead. We'll be right back. Raymond Priester running it into the end zone to give Clemson a 7-0 lead. Priester in their last game against Virginia, Tim, played a little fullback, but back at his, I guess, maybe more natural position at tailback right now. The only reason he played fullback is because he had to. Witherspoon was hurt, Sanders was hurt, and Priester, a soft-spoken senior, wants to help this team any way he can. And so that was his effort. He went to fullback when they needed him most, but comes in here and he goes right back to the position where he feels so good. He's a slammer and a slider and gets behind those blockers and boy, give Roundtree and Postel a lot of credit. Open up some big holes in the last drive. Nine in the sidelines there for Maryland. Brian Cummings, the quarterback, waiting to get his turn on the field. Richardson getting set to kick off for Clemson. And back deep, Jason Hatala, number 49 for Maryland. He's the one in the middle. This will go out of bounds. Flag down, and Maryland will start off on its own 35-yard line. Here's the call from our referee. The man wearing the white hat today is Robin Wood. Dead ball, kick out of bounds. Ball will be put in play at the 35-yard line. First down. Let's take a look at the Chile starting lineup. First of all, the offensive line for Maryland, who have allowed 36 sacks so far this year. Fugel, the leader up front, he's the tackle number 66. The receivers, Cruz, Hull, and Doug Patterson, their most reliable receiver. First down and 10 from the 35. They run it. This is Buddy Rogers, the six foot, 220 pound senior, number 34, with a nice gain on first down. Rogers joined in the backfield by Peter Timmons and Brian Cummings from East Chester, New York, the starting quarterback. Pickup of seven on first down. It'll be second down and three for Maryland. Good but, field position. Buddy Rogers missed two and a half games. He was out. He had some cartilage damage. Got hurt down in the Florida State game. But he's back now. Let's see if that helps the Maryland running game. Second down and three. Here's Rogers again. Trying to get to the perimeter. Trying to square those shoulders. Pushed out of bounds. About two feet shy of a first down by Anthony Simmons, number 41. You'll be hearing that name a lot defensively for Clemson today. He's the All-American candidate. Dingle, Planton, White, and Brumell up front. The linebackers, the strength of this defense, Abdullah Wilson and Anthony Simmons. Cornerback position has been a concern for Clemson. David Evans, a good cover guy, but a little short on size. It'll be third down and short for Maryland. Backs working out of the eye. Walton in motion. Rodgers has the first down. Buddy Rodgers pushed out of bounds, goes down hard at the 39, but it's a Maryland first down. Robert Carswell making the tackle on the play, but not before a pickup of 17 yards. Buddy Rodgers dropped 10 pounds to pick up speed in the offseason. He's still not a burner, but what he gives you is some power. He also has great vision. Stop right there. He knows that this lane out here is blocked out. All he has to do is get up there and he'll get his first. Look at him. Gets out there, tries to outrun the corner, and when he does, he's got the first down. Now, he's going to get caught from behind today, but he gives him a power runner that has great vision and can find the lanes and the outside. Ball on the 39. Vermont Jordan now in a tailback. Little waggle and coming to sack. Back at the 49-yard line by Adrian Dingle coming off the corner. 
This is a problem Maryland has had all year. They take a lot of sacks. Part of it is Cummings' fault. He will not throw the ball away. Now, he didn't have a chance here because you had a defender come free on a blitz. But this is a guy that will try to make something happen all the time. You look at this. They've allowed 35 sacks for a loss of 260 yards. That'll kill any offense. That one wasn't on Cummings. Instead, that's on Timothy Thomas Ward Fugel. A loss of 12 on first down, second and 22. Timmons in motion. This is Lamont Jordan, the talented true freshman, down to the 48-yard line. You know, in the beginning of the game, we said Maryland is making progress. They've got 11 freshmen that play an awful lot of football now. Ron Vanderlinden is trying to rebuild his program, and he will do it. He's a fine coach, and he's rebuilt programs at Northwestern and Colorado. But what this team does, they'll give you four or five really good plays, like they just did, move the football all the way down into Clemson territory, and then they'll give you a bad one. That sack was a drive killer. As a result, third down and 21. Rodgers back in the game, and Rodgers gets drilled, drops the ball. Was it complete? That's, if they say that is a completed pass, they're wrong. And if they say it's a fumble, they're wrong. Now it's they're an waving it off. Completed pass. Robert Carswell really hit Rogers hard. Watch Carswell number nine come out of the strong safety spot. Now he is keying on Rogers out of the backfield. As soon as he sees the screen, there he is, number nine. Now watch, wait for the ball. Boom! Tuck your tail, make contact, incompleted pass. Great play by Carswell. The sack killed Maryland's drive. A promising drive ending in a punt now. Russell Edwards standing on his own 36-yard line. Tony Horn back deep for Clemson. Horn calling for the fair catch at the 15-yard line. A 34-yard punt and nothing on the return. Clemson starts on its own 15. Number seven, a man to watch for the Tigers. Looking to move north in the ACC standings. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Dean Witter, there are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. And Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Clemson with the ball, first down and 10 on its own 15-yard line. Neil and Green, the school's all-time passing leader, at the helm. Priester and Xanders in the backfield. And it's Priester stacked up at the 17-yard line, gaining about two on the play. You know, this is the first time we've seen Maryland's defense start playing with some emotions. They were rather lethargic in the first drive. And after the first pass, pass-happy Clemson went to the run with Priester. Seven carries, 51 yards, and a touchdown. Now we're starting to see some emotion defensively. Clemson talked about making a successful recommitment to their running game coming in, and that's what they've shown so far. Backs out of the eye this time. Little play fake. Complete to Lawyer. And Lawyer has a first down for the Tigers out at the 27 yard line. Mal Lawyer, a six foot one inch, 180 pound sophomore, run out of bounds by Troy Davidson and a 10 yard pickup for a first down. Maryland's front seven has played quite well this year. I mean, you have to remember now, first three weeks. Those first three teams they played this season went 16 and one to start the season. Maryland had two of those three teams were ranked in the top five. But the front sevens played well. The biggest concern for Maryland defensively is the secondary. We saw him playing soft on that completion there for the first. The lawyer. Wolford in motion. Priester over the left side. Out to the 28 yard line. Make that the 29. Priester the second leading rusher in the ACC. Tackled by Rashid Simmons on the play. Averaging 85 yards rushing per game coming into this one. Interesting to watch him run, and when he does, most of the time he's running behind Glenn Roundtree, who's a 6'3", 295-pound graduate student, all academic, all ACC as a football player. And I mean to tell you something, folks, Roundtree is a load. Let's keep an eye on him this time. We'll find out if Priester follows him. Austin and Priester now under the offset eye. Little play pick on the bootleg. Green finally goes down at the 18-yard line. Irwin Light from Westfield, New Jersey, the sophomore, making the sack. 
a loss of 10 yards on the play. Clemson's shown the power game, and they've shown being able to get on the edge on the perimeter, but this time they give you the play action. Maryland doesn't bite. Here comes Light 41. Now what he does do is grab a hold of his shirt. He didn't come under control, but he grabbed enough to make sure that he waited until he got help. As soon as Nelon Green saw some black jerseys coming, he went down. That's a huge play. Again, a sack can kill a drive. Let's see if Maryland can hold him. And third down and 18 out of the shotgun. Green. Little shovel pass to Austin. And Austin is brought down short of the first down at the 26-yard line. So a nice defensive sequence by Barton and Ogle leads Maryland to the stop. You know, you can look at Maryland's record and say, boy, they must be terrible. But do you see this number 44 right here? He's as good as anybody in the country. Fine football player. He is solid. He's probably going to play on the next level. He's just learning the game. He's still a little bit undisciplined, but he had 14 tackles last week. He gets a big play there. Russell back from Maryland at the 27. Russell brought down at the 39-yard line, a 47-yard punt, 12 yards on the return. Well, Monday live at 9 Eastern, it's ABC's NFL Monday Night Football rematch. Super Bowl 31, Green Bay in New England. Green Bay coming in at 5-2, leading the NFC Central. New England also at 5-2, tied with Miami for first place in the AFC East. Drew Bledsoe just starting to come on, too, throwing the ball very well, got his confidence back up. That should be a pretty good ball game. First and 10 for the Terps at the 39-yard line. They trail 7-0. This is Buddy Rogers out to the 42-yard line. Raymond White making the stop. The grad student from Clinton, Mississippi, number 97. Clemson uses its linebackers as blitzers and droppers, pass rush and pass cover. Really have to be athletic because both those assignments, you have to have speed. The problem is their cornerbacks are inconsistent. They don't have cornerbacks that can play a man up. So you've got Wilson and Simmons, a linebacker, both tremendous all-conference players. They don't have a whole lot of help on the corners. We'll see if Maryland starts attacking them. Starting a sophomore and junior on the corners. Cummings to Rogers in the flat. Makes a move to elude one tackler and is pushed out of bounds at the 47-yard line by David Evans, one of those cornerbacks we were just alluding to, number 33 for the Clemson Tigers. David Evans, great story. He's a walk-on. But he's only five, six and a half, 173 pounds. This is a mismatch that Maryland wants to go after. He's an excellent cover guy, but his height puts him at a disadvantage. He's the cousin of Leomont Evans right here, the Washington Redskins. Leomont's supposed to be here at the game today since the Redskins are in town. But here's a good quality cornerback that's just so tiny, teams love to go after him. Third down and two for Maryland. Rodgers close to the first down at the 49. Boy, he needs a good mark here. One of those right foot left things. Brought down by Raymond White. Once again, making his second On tackle. Slot, number 96, Tony Flynn. They're going to measure this one. Yeah, see, he got the left foot. He needed <laughs> He needed the other side. Do you think there's anything to that? The left foot, right foot no, spot? No, 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 no. That's just fun to play with. He needed a friendly mark. I tell you, it is a judgment call, though. Where, what hits first? If the guy's knee, his butt, where the ball is. You know, when he goes down, a lot of times the officials are blocked out at that, so they make a judgment call, and it can mean the difference between an inch or two. That's how close they are. Wow. Put a card in there between. See, they'll take the card out of the back, back pocket, put it in between. The guy has the pole on it. Here's the football right there. Boy, how many in? <laughs> Did you go for it? There's a look at the offensive coordinator for Maryland. Craig Johnson came with Coach Vanderlyn and Fort Northwest. Ordinarily, you'd say, no, you don't go for this. It's early in the game. You punt it away. But Maryland is 2-5. and five. I mean, what do you have to lose? You're rebuilding? Line it up and go for it. You know what I'd do? I'd take Cummings, who's a street fighter, and I'd just let him go on a quarterback sneak. Well, they're going to go for it on fourth and inches. Why not? Cummings with that street fighter mentality keeps it himself and has the first down for Maryland. 
You don't want to even waste time. Buddy Rogers is your power back. You don't want to take that time for a play to develop. Let him come running up there. Just take the snap and go with it. So they move the sticks, and it'll be first and ten from midfield. Now this is where Maryland took the sack last time, and it killed their drive. They've got great field position. Now you only have half the field to go. You're going into Clemson territory. You got first down. Just be effective, be aggressive, and go after them. That's working out of the eye. Kendrick Walton split wide to the top of your screen there. You give it to Buddy Rogers. Stopped in his tracks, then lunging forward down to the 47-yard line. Rodgers, as we mentioned, a good load at 220 pounds. Yeah, but you know what Buddy Rogers gives you? He gives you like a, a little spinning top. He looks like he's small. He's 5'11", but he's 230 pounds. Now watch, contacted line. Boom! Spins off that. There's a big lineman. If you don't wrap him up, he's just going to go ahead and lunge forward. He's got these great big power legs, and they continue to drive. See, now here's the contact. Don't wrap him up. Again, no arms. And again, the third time, no arms. Finally, he lunges forward and gets some good yardage. Just now second down and eight. Walton is open, and that is Walton incomplete at the 38-yard line. He was working on Michael Allen on the corner. Walton's a guy who they want to incorporate into the offense today, Tim. Well, he's one of those young guys, and he should have made this catch. The ball was thrown hard, but it was perfectly thrown where only he could get it. They got the mismatch they wanted going against Evans. They got the push and the separation from the defender. The ball was there. He's got to make the catch and finish the play. Third down and eight. Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, watching his troops on the field. He's a good coach. He's got a passion for what he does. We were on the phone with him the other day, talking to him down in Clemson, South Carolina. Didn't want to let us go. Wanted to talk defense for hours. Third and long. Cummings under duress and brought down at the 44-yard line by Adrian Dingle again with his second sack of the afternoon. Second sack, what they're doing is they're numbering out, numbering Maryland, trying to overload. See where he comes. Now watch this. Boom, left side of your screen, they run a little twist. He comes in untouched. Adrian Dingle, who's on the left side, came on a little underneath twist down on the line of scrimmage, and nobody saw him coming. In comes the freshman punter, Russell Edwards. And there's Tony Horn standing on his own 15-yard line. Once again, that drive, dying near midfield. High punt, Horn going for the fair catch at the 22. And he makes the catch after a 33-yard punt. With 3.27 to play in the first period, Clemson leads 7 to nothing. We'll be right back. Yeah, On a chilly overcast October afternoon, it's homecoming here on the yeah, campus of Maryland. Clemson leading yeah, 7 to nothing. Yeah, the Tigers with the ball on its own 22-yard line. Trying to get enthused about football in College Park again. It's been some years since Maryland's been a winner. People starting to come back, but you can tell by the stadium today, they aren't coming back in growth yet. Coach Vanderlyn, it's to be a building job. Green on the pitch on the option. Priester brought down right near the 30-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Boy, what an outstanding play by Paul Jackson that time. He engaged the blocker and he kept stringing the play out all the way to the sidelines. I want you to watch 36 in black. All right, Nelon Green starts down the line. He's running the option. All right, you've got to take the dive man, the pitch man, and the quarterback, but stop it right here. See, this is the guy that's going to make the play. He's engaged with the blocker, strings out the play, makes it go all the way to the sidelines, and still makes the tackle on Nelon Green. That's a heck of a play by Paul Jackson. Another one of those young guys, just a junior. Second down and three. Priester brought down to the backfield at the 24-yard line by Calset. Boy, Calset got some great penetration. He's been one of the most consistent guys up front. Two great defensive plays by Maryland. Watch 91 this time. Again, he's defeating the blocker. Right hand to your screen. Gets up there on Priester. Waits for help. Doesn't wrap the arms, but has enough power. The guy's 275 pounds to knock him off balance and get help. There's look at Calset from Cleveland, Ohio. Only a sophomore. Maryland looks like a technique defense when you attack and squeeze and react. They've got to get more aggressive. Third part down. Of, part of that is confidence. Third and seven. Green out of the shotgun. Complete at the 27-yard line to Austin. Short of the first down, they'll have to punt. Let's punt it to John Saunders in New York. Mark, it's a Burger King update. 
And in this one, Colorado against Texas, rather Arizona against Washington State. Ryan Leaf having a terrific year, but this one is picked off by Kelvin Hunter. Gets it down to about the 10. Ortiz Jenkins punched it in from there, 7 0. All right, Dick Tomey allegedly under siege, under pressure in Arizona. Here's Laird with the punt. Gets off a good one. Driving Russell back to the 22. May about kicked his coverage just a touch. A nice return by Russell out to the 40 yard line. A return of 17 yards after that 52 yard punt. Austin making the tackle on the play. Maryland has set up the punt return twice very nicely now and almost broke it. It comes down to one guy. This was supposed to be a middle return and I'll show you what I mean. If you if you stop it right here you'll see that he's trying to get up here and then slide through here but he sees now there's pressure coming and gets outside. He still only has one guy to beat on the corner. If he gets around that corner it's all free. Maryland's come close twice. Don't be surprised if they do break one. Today. They've had pretty good field position today Tim. Unfortunately, a couple of sacks have hurt them. Jordan, the freshman in the backfield, and this is Lamont Jordan. Jordan has a first down at the 50-yard line. He hurt his thumb Tuesday in practice, but looked good on that run. Jolly making the tackle for Clemson. Boy, they love this kid, Lamont Jordan. He's right here from the Washington, D.C. area, from over in Suitland, Maryland. That's about 10 minutes from campus. 91 yards or 91 carries rather and almost 500 yards coming into this game but he's averaging over four yards a carry he's a big strong guy holding on the offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul and repeat first down unfortunately Tim that will not stand but it's the same thing we've talked about Mark these are problems of a young team they'll take a sack they'll make a holding penalty and it'll drive Ron Vanderlyn in nuts He's in for the long haul, though. He's, he'll be here. He remains incredibly upbeat and optimistic. We saw that when we met with him on Thursday. Real positive thinker. First down and 21. Here's Jordan again, finding a hole over the left side of the line over Gilliam and Messina. Well, ABC's College Football is online live, folks. The scores, stats, and highlights from all of today's games. Play trivia, chat, and sound off with Ben Poles, all in America Online. The keyword, ABC Sports. Just don't email us for free tickets, right there. I gave all mine to you. <laughs> hey, here we go now. This is a second and 15 in situation for Maryland, so right away you've got to start thinking pass. Cummings now has been sacked twice. They have not been able to get to the mismatch they want. The mismatch they want is Evans. Right now it's Walton. Check that Allen on the corner covering Walton. Maryland, timeout. And Cummings calls a timeout with just eight seconds to play in the first period. It, Maryland has to move the chains. They've got to melt the clock and shorten the game and keep keep Clemson's offense off the field. Keep Elon Green and Priester on the bench. To me a big game tonight in the ACC and Adrian Karsten of our cable cousin ESPN has more. Tonight the Seminoles return to the very spot where they suffered their first and only loss ever in the history of the ACC. It was the night of November 2nd 95 when the ball was snapped here from the six yard line to Warwick Dunn as he came out of the Florida State backfield. But Virginia tripped him up and sealed the 33 28 upset. But oh, how times have changed. Tonight, Virginia's 90th ranked offense goes up against the number one defense in all of college football. But remember, Virginia has a way of playing the Seminoles tough. We'll see if that trend continues tonight. You know, the Clemson Tigers, Timmy, had a shot against Florida State, losing by just a touchdown. 35 28 was the final. Clemson was leading and finally gave up a couple of big plays that cost them. But they, like Maryland, Tommy West team has been very close this year. Much more talented team than a lot of people think they are. But they had Florida State on the ropes. They've had a lot of teams on the ropes. Right now they lead seven to nothing with eight seconds to play in the first quarter. On second and 14. Stopped at the 35 yard line by Chris Jones, the linebacker. And that is the last play of the first period. Brian Cummings trying to earn his first victory against the Clemson Tigers. He's a senior. This is it for him. 
Seven nothing when we come back. Here's a look at Brian Cummings. He's got to step up. The guy's never scored a touchdown. He's never really had great success against Clemson. Today he's only two for four for five yards, and he's taken two sacks, which lost him almost 20 yards. Third and long for Maryland. This time out of the shotgun. Cummings scrambling and brought down at the 37. They'll have to punt. Donald Broomfield making the tackle for Clemson. You know, Cummings has to get back and has to get the ball off. These guys are starting to fly around. They're getting good penetration on him. You know you've already had two sacks. He doesn't have the quick feet. He's got to get back, get set, find a guy and throw it or throw it away. And, Timmy, after that last scoreless period by Maryland, they have not scored a touchdown now in 17 consecutive quarters against Clemson. Edwards punting. Horn back deep for the Tigers on a 17-yard line. Under pressure and barely got it off. Horn tackled right away at the 25-yard line. A 39-yard punt by Edwards. Well, tonight on ABC, all new episodes of the Saturday night specials at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central. C-16, followed by Stephen Bochco's new total security. Then it's heating up between Dylan McDermott and Laura Flynn Boyle on The Practice. All tonight on ABC. Maryland's had a couple of defensive uh, stops now against Clemson the last two times. They need to get some emotion on the offense. These are the offensive guys now. They're coming over. They're looking at what's taking place, but they have to pick things up a little bit. Max out of the eye on first and ten for the Tigers. Play fake. Green incomplete near midfield. Intended for Hall. Let's go back to New York. Mark, Arizona against Washington State. Washington State yet to lose this year, but third and 18 here. Ortiz Jenkins tosses it deep 37 yards to Dennis Northcutt, and it's a 14-0 lead Arizona over Washington State. Mark. Yeah, John, it makes you wonder if uh, Washington State might be looking ahead just a little bit. Green, 4 of 5 today. Witherspoon now in the backfield. Out to the 27-yard line. That was Witherspoon. Barton making the tackle for Maryland. Maryland's defense, we talked about the last two series, how they've really picked things up. Watch Barton right there in the middle. Now he reads it, not a lot of stutter step. Now he'll take on the blocker or the ball carrier right away, and there's help coming. See, this is what Ogle gets over there, 32. You see 53 Hicks jumping in with him. If they get a bunch of guys swarming around the football, it's going to put pressure on Nelon Green to do a little bit more than just hand the ball off. Timmy, they've got him in a third and seven situation right now. Four wideouts in for the Tigers. Green's using more and more shotgun this year. And they're coming on a blitz. And a pick. Interception by the Terps. Clinton Jackson. Check that Paul Jackson. Paul Jackson made back-to-back -back big plays. That's his third interception of the year. Another one of the local players they got here from Clinton, Maryland. He's a junior. All right, you put him in a shotgun. It gives Green better vision, and it gives him more time to look over what's taking place. But this is not a well-thrown ball. Maryland got some pretty good pressure. Now, look at 36 just reading it. It didn't look like Warren even knew that the ball was going to be thrown in that direction. He certainly didn't go after it while Jackson did. Good play by the junior. The type of spark that they were looking for. And now in good field position at the Clemson 31-yard line. Terrapins have had good field position all afternoon. Haven't been able to capitalize on it. Walton in motion. This is Rogers. Brought down at the 29-yard line. On first and ten, that was McKenzie making the tackle, number 35 for Clemson. I'll tell you, the, the play that was fun to watch, Rodgers was running the ball, but out there on the outside was the receiver, Walton. He's going down throwing blocks on the defensive backs. Walton's one of those young kids we talked about earlier. He's just having fun playing. He's bouncing around. He's throwing blocks out there on these little guys to get him out of the ball game now. And he had a skin growth removed earlier this year. Fortunate in that it was not cancerous. Brian Cummings wants a timeout. There was something that he didn't like in the backfield. Timmons was having a problem with the communication with Cummings. So they used their second timeout. Now with just one remaining. 12.43 to play in the first half. And we're going to catch our breath and call a timeout ourselves. We'll be right back.
Brian Cummings is two of four today passing for a total of five yards. Now looking at second and seven. Maryland's had only one play over seven yards this afternoon. They've got to take a shot. They've got good field position here. Go ahead. You're inside the 30. Take a shot downfield with a pass. Try to get this thing into the end zone. Walton is their home run guy. And a little motion up front. Flags down. Here's the call. It's going to go against Clemson. Dead ball offsides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. McKenzie was the guy who jumped offside. All right, but what that does now, instead of second down and seven, it gives you second down and two. We used to call that a waste down. They can always come back on third down and try to get the first. So now it's almost imperative that they take a shot downfield and try to get a touchdown. We'll see what Coach Vanderlinden and his staff are thinking. Second and short, Jordan alone back behind Cummings. See if they go after the little cornerback, Evans. They run the counter tray. This is Jordan. Jordan has the first down at the 19-yard line for the Turks. Brought down by David Evans and Robert Carswell. Now, that's not bad football. They got the first down. They moved the chains. They're banging it out. And we said they haven't had a play longer than seven yards today. But right now, they seem to be very satisfied with that. I mean, they're getting their four, five, six, seven yards. I just think right now you're down seven. You've got Clemson backed up. Make them think a little bit. Let's loosen that defense up and put them on their heels. If not, you get guys showing those nine-man, eight-man fronts. They run it again. Rodgers this time. Down to the 17-yard line for Maryland. The tackle made by McKenzie again. Terrapins are getting a pretty good push out of their offensive line right now. And it's a big offensive line. When you go across it, you've got Gilliam at 321. You've got Messina at 300. Thomas is almost 300. Ward's 310. And Fugel's 300. So we, I mean, those, those are full-size men. We see more and more of that now in college football. Last week, Kansas State's offensive line averaging well over 300, as does Clemson. Second down and seven. Rodgers in the backfield on the option. Cummings making the pitch, keeping himself as a first down. It'll be first and goal from the six-yard line for Maryland. You know, you have to love this guy. This guy, we mentioned he's a street fighter. He's a ferocious competitor. What he doesn't have is great feet. But watch this now. He comes on the option. This is not Neilon Green running this thing. Neilon Green's an old peewee buddy of his. But look at this. He trips over his own feet as he makes a cut. And that's going to happen. But I'd love to have that guy on the field anytime. He's the guy that'll look you in the eye and say, if you get my way, I'll punch you in the mouth. I mean, he's a tough competitor. A lot of ferocity. He's had to learn three different offensive systems since he started here at Maryland. First and goal. Cummings hands it off to Rodgers. Rodgers inside the five, down to the four-yard line for Maryland. All right, guys, get the balloons ready. Get the fireworks ready. It's been 265 game minutes since Maryland scored a touchdown against Clemson. I mean, we're going back to 1992. That band ought to get ready. We'll see how long that shutout lasts. 17 quarters without a touchdown. Are you kidding me? Here we go. Trying to bring that drought to an end. Second and goal. More motion up front. And this time again to me, it looked like it was Clemson. It looked like McKenzie, 35, jumped a little bit early. That'll be half Dead the ball. distance. Offsides right. on the defense. Half the distance to the goal and repeat second down. See, that's McKenzie right in the middle. Now watch, here he is right up here. He's going to jump. Boom. Here he comes. Sees a little movement. There he goes. 6'2", sophomore. 265 pounds that moves it down inside the two now for Maryland on the brink scoring their first touchdown against Clemson in 17 quarters Maryland goes to its jumbo package with Timmons at 230 Kalapinski at 210 and Rodgers at 230 and it's Rodgers no denied at the two yard line by the All-American Anthony Simmons the top tackler on this Clemson defense Woo! are you that was kidding me Hey, when this guy's healthy, he's as good as anybody in the country. Outside Andy Katzenmeyer, maybe in that win. But this guy is a player. Boy, he's really disruptive. Strong, nimble, mean, dominant. You know, here's a guy that didn't play football until he was 15 years old. Late bloomer. He's just learning. He was slowed at the start of the season because of a hip pointer, but he's healthy now. Kalapinski in motion. Cummings in a pass. 
Kalapinski could have, should have caught that ball. All right, the band's starting to sit back down. The fireworks are starting to put away. This is fourth down. I'd go for it. And in comes the field goal unit, led by Brian Compta. This ball should have been caught. Watch, this is a well-thrown ball. But again, you're throwing at Kalapinski, the fullback. All right, here you go. The ball is right there. Kalapinski doesn't make the catch. He should have. The ball was well thrown. Didn't seem like he got his body turned around. Coaches talk about swinging that head around, Tim. Couldn't make the catch. Kopka from 19 yards out. He's four of five on the year. Little chip shot. And it's good. A defensive stand, a good sequence for Clemson in the red zone. Cummings came that close. We'll be right back. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Jeep. Makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee and Wrangler. The document company Xerox. National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Craig Johnson, the offensive coordinator, talking to his troops on the sideline. They came close to a touchdown, but couldn't convert. Well, it was a good series. They moved the ball mostly with power plays. They still don't have a play over seven yards, but at the same time, the offensive line's making some holes, and Rodgers is getting through them. And the defense is starting to play well. That's what's setting this whole thing up. Now Maryland just needs to find some consistency. Rhodes kicking off. Tony Horn, one yard deep. The gap closes up at the 23-yard line, a 24-yard return by Tony Horn. You know, one of the bad things about having a young club is that they, they sit there on the sidelines and they'll make five or six plays, and you always have that expectation that something's going to happen bad against you. You know, they're always going to break a big play against you. Once you get over that hump, and that comes with maturity and success, once you get over that, you become a fine football team. I think that's what Vandy's going to have here at Maryland. They've with, got some speed and power. And with respect to some of the players that were here when he got here, Timmy, he's got to change their thinking, too, in addition to instilling some positive thinking by the youth. First down and 10 from the 23. Priester. Priester with a gain of about seven out to the 30-yard line. Let's see if Clemson gets Priester going again. He had that great drive right there to open his ball game. He went over 50 yards right there in the opening drive and scored the touchdown. They've shut him down here the last couple of times, but Xanders, the fullback, is down now, and this has been a problem that Clemson's had all year. Xanders, the fullback, has been hurt. Weatherspoon's been banged up. He's still not 100%. Xanders had knee surgery, actually, last spring. Was well, bouncing back from that. Xanders had knee surgery, and, and Witherspoon's playing with a flat tire, too. He got hurt in the Virginia game. He still has a sore knee. Well, folks, tomorrow live at 3.30 Eastern time, it's the MLS Cup 97. Defending champs, D.C. United taking on the Colorado Rapids from RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. More than 50,000 people expected down the road at RFK Stadium for that. This area really has a lot of rabid sports fans, not just football. Yeah, but they really haven't gotten back in line here to follow the Maryland Terrapins. You know, this, this place used to rock. And if you look at the championships, the conference championships, they dominated in the 50s, they dominated in the 70s, and had three championships in the 80s, and that fell off a little bit. And fans have gotten a little uneasy. Lewis Johnson has something from the sidelines. Lewis? Yeah, you know, to echo what you're saying, Vanderlyn came on the sideline there, back there, and talked to his offensive lineman, told him they're doing a great job, hang in there, all the emotional type things. But that's exactly what's missing on the sideline. There are really no fireworks, and not scoring that touchdown is the thing that just keeps them from getting over that emotional hump, guys. Yeah, that's an opportunity that went by the wayside. They could have used a touchdown. But, you know, stop right there. See, now the offense can get a big jack here. They can get pumped up from what the defense is doing. We talked about the defense having two terrific stops against Clemson. Here again, they're bringing up a third down situation. It'll be third and short, but they've been able to stop Priester. We'll see what happens here. They make a stop here. The offense get good field position again, and they should be jacked up. Well, it's on the 31-yard line. Third down and two for Clemson. to Priester. Oh, a great hand walk by Raymond Priester to stay on his feet in the first down out of the 42-yard line. An 11-yard pickup 
but he was trapped in the backfield, stayed on his feet by using his hand, and was finally brought down by Rashid Simmons and Troy Davidson. Simmons shaken up on the play. Maryland Terrapins had a shot here to make this play in the backfield. Here comes Barton. There's Priester. He just doesn't get his legs. Priester keeps his balance. This is a tremendous running back. We talked about the guy being a soft-spoken, hard player. Ran for 163 yards against Maryland last year. He did that on his own. He was hitting the backfield. Continue to go and move the chains. Priester and Austin now out of the eye on first and 10. Flag down at the 41. You know, Clemson was in the same situation last year. Right now they're 3-3. Three and three. They came in here last year against Maryland, and it was Priester who had the big day, and they went on a five-game winning streak after the win at Maryland. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards, still first down. Yeah, when the leaves turn colors, they turn it on. And Tommy West probably hoping that they could have turned it on a couple of weeks ago against Virginia. They had four second-half turnovers which led to that 21-7 defeat against Virginia. Tommy West does not lose very often in the month of November and late October. First and 15 play fake by Green. Has time. This is where he can hurt you when he scrambles. And he's tripped up by the shoelaces at the 42-yard line by number 98, Anthony Jenkins. You know, Tommy West was a solid player. He's even a better coach. He should be a politician because his record in November is sensational. I mean, look at this. 11 and 3. That's what all the elections are. <laughs> Guy's been fantastic. Had a nice meeting with him last night. Talked to him a couple times during the week. Just a great guy. I'm a big fan of Tommy West. And yeah, they had such high expectations at the beginning of the year. Well, and they had a lot of problems when he first got there off the field. He went and fought through those. He's brought everybody together. He's maintained a, a little bit of consistency there. There's the receiver screen complete to Lawyer. Lawyer brought down at the 46-yard line, about five yards short of the first down. That's a play, Tim, that I'm surprised you don't see more of in college football, especially when you can release those offensive linemen, get them downfield. I love that play. Now, a lot of people have called it a pick. I call it a rub off. I think it's just good football where Horn will come out and run straight, and then Lawyer cuts right off his tail. So it is like a basketball play, but it certainly is legal. I mean, there's no contact. You just have to throw it. It's a timing pattern and throw it in rhythm. It is third down and six from the Clemson 45. A look at the numbers of Neil and Green, the passing leader all time at Clemson. Out of the shotgun. Tips of the line of scrimmage incomplete. And the Tigers will have to punt. Clemson's offense this year has allowed Green to play out of the shotgun more in passing situations. They say that allows him a better chance of reading coverages and to get the throw off. But he's 0 for 2 out of the shotgun here this afternoon. One interception and one blocked. Laird into punt, standing on his 31. Deion Russell. 14. Flag down at the 32. Russell pushed out of bounds also at the 32. DeMarco Fox making the stop. An 18-yard return, but will it stand? It's against the Clemson Tigers. No, it's against Maryland. So they'll move this back against the Terrapins. Check that, I stand corrected. Well, next Saturday, live at 3.30 Eastern Time, America's biggest road show rolls on. College football on ABC. Some regional coverage, Oklahoma, Nebraska, NC State, Florida State, USC against Washington, and a Big Ten matchup we will tell you about later. Well, the nose of the ball now moved back to the 22. Jordan in the backfield behind Brian Cummings. Some of the worst field position Maryland's had all afternoon. First and 10. Cummings finally finds Walton. And he has a first down 
at the 33 yard line. Evans and Simmons making the stop. But Tim, finally, they get the ball upfield just a little bit to Walter. Yeah, and that's not the play that they really want to do, but I think they're trying to set the play up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, here's Walton, who's six foot three, and he's going against a cornerback that's five, six and a half. So this time they just run a little bit of out. See, Evans, 33 there, starting to give ground because people have been picking on it. So he starts to run out of there. So they'll go under him until he bites the bait. As soon as he comes up, they're going after him. That's a setup play. Walton this time split to the bottom of your screen. First down to 10, Maryland. Jordan almost stayed on his feet. And he's near a first down at the 42. Lamont Jordan, an explosive, talented freshman. Tackled by Childress on the play. If you're a Maryland fan, it surprises me how they cannot get excited about what is about to happen in College Park. I mean, here is a freshman that comes in, and we saw him against Florida State, running against the number three team in the country and getting big gains, 15, 16 yards a pop. Jordan is 210 pounds. He's got great speed. Uh, right in this stadium over the summer, I saw him play in the All-Star game, the high school All-Star game. He was sensational in that. You would think Maryland fans would get excited and start following this kid, following the program, looking at all the freshmen that they have here in College Park and say, hey, they might be pretty good. I might want I want to start following them. Yeah, Timmy, you know, the coaches talk about him as being a football player with track-type speed, not a track guy with football speed. Good football instincts. Well, they're very careful when they say that. They think that guys that are just track guys are like thoroughbreds. You know, they're very fragile. They say this kid's a workhorse, but he's got track tendencies. He's got that kind of speed, but he's a football player. He's He's tough. He's hard-nosed. He's a warrior. And a big coming out party against Temple with a freshman record of 135 yards rushing. And here comes Lamont Jordan again. This time, they keyed on him and brought him down at the 42-yard line. Broomfield making the stop for the Tigers. Tommy West, Reggie, Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator at Clemson. He used that 3-4 defensive scheme. It utilizes its linebackers' quickness and the big guys up front. And here's uh, Broomfield's almost 300 pounds. He's 290. And you got the quickness coming out of your linebackers. Tigers have to win four of the next five to become bowl eligible. Rodgers now in the game for Jordan on third down and one. Flag down. The whistle this one dead. You know what? Maryland was a third and one and a chance to get great field position in the first down. And it looked like one of their freshman guys moved, Walton. They've imploded a couple of times at midfield already today. Dead ball, illegal procedure, fault start on the offense, five yards, third down. A towel of the culprit. Watch the top of your screen, and you'll see somebody jump. There's a Tala up there, number 49. See him? He says, uh, he knew it. I'm out here. It's not like you have a, a huge crowd here where you can't hear. That's just discipline and lack of, so he'll go down on the principal's list there. See <laughs> Ron Vanderlyn writing a little note, bring it to his attention. Mr. Positive on the sidelines, third down and six now instead of third and one. They fake the reverse, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Carswell got a hand on it, leaping high into the air to foil the pass attempt. Much to the dismay of the quarterback, Cummings. So what was third and short turns into fourth and a punting situation now for the Terps. Edwards coming in a punt from his own 22. Cummings with a lot of people here watching today. Tony Horn is standing on his own 25 for Clemson. 419 to play in the first half. Horn with an opportunity for a return. And he's brought down right away at the 28-yard line. A 38-yard punt. And just three on the return. Davidson making the tackle for Maryland. 7-3 when we come back. Stick around. Back on homecoming Saturday in College Park, Maryland. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Lewis Johnson. 7-3, Clemson leads Maryland. It is first down and 10 for the Tigers at the 27-yard line. Priester and Austin out of the offset eye. Wolford in motion. Horn makes.
makes the catch. Tries to make the move, still on his feet, and swarmed back at the 27-yard line. He actually lost ground trying to get the extra yardage. I thought he stepped out of bounds. He was surprised he was still on his feet, tried to spin out and lost a couple. Cliff Crosby, number 25, making the stop for Maryland. Tony Horn has outstanding speed and 110 hurdles in 13-5 in high school. He's also their leading receiver with 49 receptions now, but watch this. They get it out to him quickly, try to get up a one-on-one -on -one situation. I thought he stepped out right there, but he didn't. Now he tries to pick up a few extra, and this is where they come in droves to take him down. You have to be impressed right now the way the black jerseys are flying to the football. They've had three consecutive good sequences on defense. Second down and 10. Green to pass again. Picked off again. up with another big play defensively. You know, they talk about Kendall Ogle, and they say this guy plays out of control. He's a wild man. But he just came up with a big play, and if this doesn't ignite the offense at Maryland, nothing will. Look at this. This is just a poor pass, but Kendall Ogle's in the zone. Elon Green looks right at him and throws right in his direction. And look at 32. He never saw Kendall Ogle coming over. Boy, with a quarterback as quick and agile as Green, you have to play with controlled aggression. Come hard, but with balance. And it was a situation where Ogle read him. Green never looked off, and he made the pick. And now the offense with good field position, once again, courtesy of the defense. I'm still waiting for Maryland to take a shot deep and go after it. Walton is split wide to the top of your screen. Here's the counter tray. Rogers still on his feet, trying to make something out of nothing. Fumbles it. And fortunately for the Terps, it bounces back to them. <laughs> I'm just it's exciting. Watching, I'm watching the reaction of Ron Vanderlyn. He backed off the sidelines about 10 yards, took his headset off, and shook his head. You know how frustrating it has to be when you're rebuilding a program? He's been there before at Northwestern and Colorado. He's going to get it done here. Exudes a real positive image for the that, football program. Got that type A personality. <laughs> Jordan in the backfield. Cummings out of the shotgun. Walton incomplete at the 14-yard line, just a little short. Allen on the coverage for Clemson. Just not in sync yet. They aren't in sync. The ball's not well thrown because he was open again. Now, if you watch Walton, here's a young guy that's got good speed. Again, he gets the separation. Now, here comes the ball, but it's underthrown. Still should have made the catch. Ball's underthrown, but that ball is certainly catchable, and they should have had a first down. Cummings now three of eight on the day for a total of 16 yards passing. One of those uh, combination deals where the pass wasn't really well thrown, knuckleball, and the receiver should have had it but drops it. with relief for Maryland Terrapin fans. Kopka in for the extra point. You know, you got to start thinking it's
31 yard line. And while we have a moment, let's go back to New York and John Sinus for what's coming up at halftime. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, four undefeated teams in action today. Well, a big one in East Lansing, Michigan, Michigan State. Battle for state bragging rights, but also Michigan still in the national title picture. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. All right, John and Todd. 144 to play in the first half here as Maryland with its first lead of the ball game, 9 to 7. Green, who's thrown two picks today, completes this one to Wofford out of bounds at the 36. Stops the Crosby making the stop for Maryland. Clemson has two timeouts left, a minute and a half to work. And they've got the sidelines. Now you watch how Green utilizes the clock. How he works the clock. He can do that. He's a good manager of it. And you expect him to get hot. Now he's fought through a bad foot, sore toe, ankle sprain, bumps and bruises. But he can get on a streak and hurt. On second down, tipped and almost picked off again. And again, it was Ogle who almost had the. Tony Horn was the intended receiver for Clemson. And it'll be third down and four. One more look. Yeah, watch this. He throws into coverage and watch 32. Now that's Ogle. Ogle had the interception the last time they had it. And he almost gets the pick here. Puts it in even. Safety Baker, number two, a chance at it. And now you can hear the fans here at Burr Stadium. On the blitz, Green completes it to Wofford. And it's incomplete. Crosby with a nice stick. Now this ball is well thrown. You can't hang this on Green. The out pattern, they've got separation, they've got enough for the first. But Crosby comes up and makes the hit, knocks him, knocks him loose of the ball. Even if he had made the catch, he stepped out inside the marker. So Maryland, Tim, will get the ball back with one and a half to play in the first half. See if they can finish this thing off. I asked him about the penalties. He said he's not too worried about it. He wants to look at the film because sometimes penalties are and sometimes penalties are not. Guys? Yeah, good point, Lewis. And uh, we want to bring up the point that the freshmen have continued to make significant contributions for this Maryland squad. Well, and that's something that's certain you look for in a rebuilding program with well, a new coach, new program, new uh, scheme offensively and defensively. Maryland has won two straight when leading at halftime. We'll see what happens here. But they uh, they led at Duke, Temple. They led Ohio at halftime, but then lost that game 21 to 14. The coaches were telling us this week at practice that the Terrapins have had letdowns at the beginning of the third quarter. They don't know what the problem is, but they haven't been able to get the team going at the beginning of the third quarter. And then middle of the third quarter, they seem to come back to life. Yeah, Ron Vanderlyn and team, even against North Carolina, was in that game until the beginning of the third quarter when they turned it over. They will receive the kickoff. This is Atala taking the knee seven yards deep. So they'll start off from their own 20-yard line as we look at the Dean Witter first half statistics and the numbers that jump out at you the two turnovers we talked about for Clemson well and then you look down the bottom to the penalties Maryland's had four penalties for 36 yards really seemed to hurt them of course Clemson had three and then the sacks we saw that uh, Cummings took a couple of sacks early that actually took him out of drive so Clemson scored a touchdown on the first drive then Maryland forced four punts had two interceptions on the next six possessions Buddy Rogers, the single back with two tights and two wides. He hands it off to Rogers, and Rogers is out to the 24 yard line, maybe the 25. Gain of about five on first down. It'll be second and five. Rommel and Wilson making the tackle for Clemson. I know the Maryland coaches were really excited to get Buddy Rogers back into the lineup. Buddy Rogers missed two and a half games. He got hurt in the game down at Florida State, but he was a Doak Walker Award candidate at the beginning of the year. 17 rushing touchdowns, and it's good to get him back in the lineup. He's one of the more older guys that gives the offense stability. And this offensive line has done a good job. Rodgers this time stuffed at the 25-yard line. A good charge led by Adrian Dingle, who was one of the tacklers there for Clemson. Dingle from Holly Hill, South Carolina. Great player, but it's the first time all year that he's been healthy, so the coaches expect some big things from him this afternoon. Brings up a passing down from Maryland, you would think, but Cummings just 4 of 9 for 38 yards. Cummings trying to beat his... Pee-wee football teammate, Elon Green. 
Third down and four out of the shotgun. In the flat complete to Rodgers. Rodgers has the first down at the 32-yard line, tackled by Anthony Simmons. You know, you have the feeling that Maryland coming into the game felt that Clemson's weakness was on the corners. And you have the feeling that they're trying to set that up, but haven't gone to it yet. In other words, they took their wide receiver, sent them deep to run the corners out of the play, and then brought Rodgers on a little screen pass over there in the area that had been vacated, and he picked up the first. But you have the feeling that they're eventually going to go to the corners. Still waiting for that moment. Jordan behind Cummings. Walton, one of those dangerous wideouts, split wide to the bottom of your screen. A little bootleg action complete to the tight end, Mike Hull. That's the first time this afternoon, Tim, that we've seen the tight end incorporated into the offense. Fox making the tackle, but a pickup of eight yards on first down. It's only the tenth reception for Hull for the entire year. They do not go there very often. He's not a real physical player, but he's a player that has good feet, good hands. He's 6'6", 245. He's a freshman that they think can develop into a big-time tight end. Nose of the ball on the 40-yard line. Second down and two. On Jordan, trying to get outside. And there's an example of that Clemson speed. David Evans from the corner providing run support. You know, we talked about Evans before. What a great story that kid is. Evans is a walk-on. And he's only 5'6 and a half, 173 pounds. But I want you to watch how number 33 plays. There's 33, top of your screen. He comes up. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation with Jordan, who's 210 pounds. He takes that 5'6 and a half, 173 frame and throws him to the ground and stops the first down. It is third down and short. up front Jordan gets the call and I'm not sure he made it I don't think so he's short of the first down no Anthony Simmons and Mon Wilson came up they showed that they were running a little blitz a run blitz they filled all the gaps filled the lanes and made the stop unable to move the ball and now they'll have to punt good defensive play good defensive stand by the Tigers of Clemson Maryland has to guard against self-destructing here in the early going in the third quarter. Edwards standing on his own 25. Not a great punt by Edwards this time. He shanks it. We'll have to see where the officials mark this one. It'll come, boy, way out to the 39-yard line. Just a 20-yard punt by Edwards that time. So Clemson will start off with pretty good field position on its first possession of the third period. Remember the beginning of the game, they almost blocked a punt. I don't think he's been right since then. We're going to take a break and come back. It's 9-7 when we return. Clemson with the ball on its own at 38-yard line. Tommy West team, boy, they're already in bowl season. They're thinking bowls. They've got to win. Well, after Maryland, they've got Wake Forest, Duke. They've got North Carolina down in Clemson, and then they travel to South Carolina. Here's Priester running between the tackles. Still on his feet as forward progress, taking him to the 43-yard line. Raymond Priester stopped by Cowsett right there, but he was one of the lone bright spots offensively for Clemson in the first period. Yeah, he's, he's a slam and slide runner. You know, he'll get a shoulder on you, then he'll break it. But on his touchdown run, he was virtually untouched. He got a good block, good push from Roundtree 75 there. They got a cutoff block, and he just kind of strolled on into the end zone. And he's had a pretty big day. Look at this, 77 yards, averaging over five yards every time he carries it. Backs out of the eye on second down and five. They give it to the fullback. First man through Austin, and he is tackled right away. Maybe lost a yard. Number 90, Hicks making the stop. Oh, uh, what a play by Kendall Ogle. Kendall Ogle's the guy. I want you to watch 32 come in and make this play. Kendall Ogle is coming to stop it right here. All right, he's fighting through this, sees the ball carry now, locks on, and watch this. Gets through, boom. That play is over before it could even develop. As soon as Green handed him the ball, Ogle had him. Hicks and Ogle on that tackle. Ogle making the initial hit. Third and six, Priester, he didn't get the first down. So Maryland's defense responds with a stand of its own. I'll tell you something about Priester, though. That play wasn't over when a lot of the Maryland players thought it was. He had a great second effort and still got within two yards of the sticks. 
Barton led the charge of Maryland tacklers. The middle linebacker, number 44. Priester off to the sidelines. I had the feeling that Maryland's been ready to break one of these all day. They've had a couple of great returns. Russell standing back on his own 15. And Laird with a high spiraling punt, driving all the way back to the 10 yard line. A 42 yard punt. A nice punt by Laird. Clemson hasn't been good this year on special teams, but that one was pretty good. We'll be right back. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Microsoft, where do you want to go today? State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Miller Lite, now official beer sponsor of the NFL. Ah, Testudo. <laughs> the Maryland Terrapin outside of the Maryland locker room. They come by, they rub Testudo as they go by. You know, legend has it, Maryland was filled with terrapins, and the terrapin would snap at you and lock on your arm and would not let go until the sun went down. I'm gonna go rub that thing a few more times to me. Two point lead. Cummings going up top to Hatala, and it's incomplete at the 37 yard line. Michael Allen with him, stride for stride. First time they've tried to go deep on the corners of Clemson. If I'm not mistaken, they've only had one completion all day to the wide receivers. They haven't even tried to throw that much, but when they have, it's been to the backs and once to the tight end. They have not gone to the wideouts at all today, and they just tried there to go to the corners deep. It'll be second down and 10. Well, you work on that all day to set it up, and then you overthrow it. Yet to throw the ball vertically. Rodgers in the backfield behind Cummings. Walton split to the bottom of your screen. They give it to Rodgers. No room on the perimeter. Pushed out of bounds at the 14-yard line by Carswell. Always makes it tough when you throw away your first down play. Now you bring it up at second and 10. So you come back with the run. You pick up a few. And that sets up third down and long. And you have to go right back into your passing game. Well, what's Maryland's weakness this afternoon? It's been the passing game. They've gotten sacked or gotten in trouble every time they've tried to throw. And when you throw the ball, not many good things can happen. Two of them are bad. <laughs> no, well, I'm telling you this, Wilson and Simmons right now in a passing situation, they'll strap it on. They've put in four or five different blitz packages today, and they've gotten the two big sacks. Maryland has done a good job adjusting. We'll see what happens here. Third down and six. Out of the shotgun, they come with a blitz. Coming sacked back at the 12-yard line. Raheem Abdullah with the sack for Clemson. They came hard, and they got to him. Well, and they came with one of the stop it right here, and we'll tell you what's going to happen. Here's Simmons in here. He's going to go around this way. Here comes the blitz on the outside. Now run it and watch what they do. Now here comes your stunt. You see Simmons go to the left. All right, now the backside's unprotected. Here comes Abdullah. He makes the tackle. Bingo. They stop the Terrapins again. That is a quick swarming defense for Clemson. That front seven. Pretty quick. Edwards punting two yards deep in his own end zone. Driving Horn back to the 35. And Horn with a 13-yard return. Maryland still leading by two. And Coach Vanderlinden talked to us earlier about how he's rebuilding this program. I equate this to having a huge boulder sitting right in front of us. And every day we come in, all of us, coaches and players alike, with a sledgehammer. And we just keep whacking away at this boulder. And at times it looks as if you're not making any progress. But I know within a very hopefully short period of time, but I know within a couple years, we're going to walk in one day and we're going to whack that boulder and it's going to shatter. And then all of a sudden we'll be there. And the crowds will be full and the success will be there and the winds will be there. And, and then at that point, uh, we throw it into high gear and take off. See, he's, he's trying to get that success. He, he knows that the light's going to go on. These kids are going to understand his program eventually. They won't have to think first. They can just react because it'll be second nature to them. And then when they start the winning, that's contagious. And they're hoping everything will happen and fall back in place and the crowds will come back and everything. Now here's a look at some other coaches in the ACC that have rebuilt their respective programs in the Home Depot coaches fact this week. Vanderlinden, 2-5 and five right now. Yeah, you look at Bobby Bowden now, he's number three. You look at Matt Brown, he's number four in the country. 
So they started slowly as well, and then things kicked in and bingo. One of the keys, of course, Tim, is getting the support and the patience of the administration. And they're very supportive of Coach V right here in Maryland. Well, we had a long meeting yesterday with Debbie Yao. She is fully 100% behind him and knows in her heart that he's going to do it. Right now, though, Green, he had his first four passes in this game. Since then, he's been three of nine with two interceptions. Huge play right here for Clemson. Third and three, backs out of the eye with 8.09 remaining in the third quarter. On the option, Priester, first down, Tigers. Neil and Green waited until the last moment before he made the pitch. Davidson finally made the tackle, but Priester got the first down, picking up 14 yards. When you run the option and you run it right, then it's assignment defense. Somebody has to take the dive man. Stop it right there. They've got the dive man right there. Here's the quarterback. He's got to get up right now and take Priester. He doesn't get there in time. Mismatch in size. Priester has leverage on him. Priester gets the first down. Assignment defense on the option. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Timmy Clemson gives you so many different looks. They're so multiple on offense. Witherspoon now in the backfield, and this is him on the counter. Stuffed up at the 32-yard line. Cowsett leading the charge along with Barton. You know, here's an example of what Vanderlinden is trying to build and preach here at Maryland. Barton is a guy who, when Venderlin first came in, wanted to wear a visor, one of those visors across his face mask. And the coach told him, you know, you're a leader on this team, Eric. I need the guys, I want the guys in the huddle to see your eyes and to see the fire that you have. Plus, I want the opponents to see your eyes. I want them to see that fire in your eyes and that there's no fear there. You gotta be a warrior if you're gonna be in the middle of a defensive unit. Second down and 11. Play fake. Complete, broken up nicely in the secondary by Sanders. Boy, Lewis Sanders was all over. You know, he had three interceptions against Temple. Ran a kickoff back against North Carolina 90 yards. He's their best defensive back, best cover guy. And I mean, he's all over this play. Now watch him. He's in his hip pocket. Left hand goes down, swats it away. He's all over the defender. Now, some Clemson fans wanted pass interference, and he could have gotten a flag there. He's an aggressive defensive back. That's going to happen occasionally. No flags, good play. Third down and 11. They give it to the first man through. That's Austin. And he has a first down at the 20 yard line for the Tigers. A huge gain of 12 yards, coming at a good time for Clemson. You Jackson know, making the tackle. You know, Priester's 230 pounds. You don't expect him to be as elusive as he is, but I want you to watch 25 comes up grasping air. There's one missed tackle. There goes 25. And look at this. Unbelievable. That was Austin. That wasn't even Priester. Austin's still over 200 pounds. Big, strong backs back there for Clemson. First down and 10 from the 20. Offered in motion. Priester dancing between the tackles down to the 19-yard line, tackled by Cal Set and Barton. Priester beginning to really pile up those yards. It'll be second down and nine for Clemson. Now gone over 100 yards for the afternoon. Two weeks ago, he played fullback. They put him in there to block. He carried the ball only eight times. He got 25 yards. Tommy West told us, I've got to get Priester the ball. I want him to have 20 to 25 carries today. He's got to take us back to where we were. Going back to playing Clemson football, running the ball well. Here he is again. Priester tackled at the 16-yard line that time, gaining about three. Johnny Hicks making the stop for Maryland. You know, you were just talking about Priester going over 100 yards. He ran for 163 yards against Maryland last year and got the winning touchdown that started that five-game winning streak. Here he gets tremendous push. Look at that. Holsey 71, 179, Gamble 73. Those guys, those are all 300-pounders as well, just pushing those black jerseys out of the way for Priester. Clemson muscling the ball down the field. Approaching five minutes to play in the third quarter. On the pitch. Priester lowering his hat. And close to the first down near the 10-yard line. There was a violent collision there. Sanders came up and met Priester along with Erwin Light. Yeah, Sanders and Light came up there and both were light. I mean, you're supposed to move him backwards, and I want you to watch the power of Priester. Now, he's short of the first down. 
and not even close to the first down marker when they make contact. But watch, here comes the pitch. Sanders, number 37, gets over. Here comes 32 Ogle. There's the hit. Now look at Priester. Still going forward, gets up near the first down mark, gives him a shot at that first down. So it's going to be like fourth and about an inch instead of fourth and three. And in comes the Clemson field goal unit. David Richardson on fourth and inches, attempting a field goal from 27 yards out, and they call a timeout. Much to an irate Tommy West. I'm really surprised they're kicking a field goal here. You know it's less than a foot. It's less than six inches. With an offensive line that averages over 300 pounds and a running back with some nice skills in Priester. That's one of those deals where if you think you ought to go for it and the coach tells you the field goal unit's going after it, you know, you might step up, call, <laughs> act like you're confused, call that touchdown, and go try to talk him into it. Sounds like you've done that before. <laughs> 4-11 to play in the third quarter. The Clemson Tigers at 3-3 three three coming in. 1-3 and three in ACC play. On homecoming weekend here in College Park. I didn't see you in the parade earlier today. No, sir. <laughs> they had enough band members there that <laughs> took up the whole field. This is a huge play now. 9-7 ball game. You've got 4-11 to go in the third quarter. It's crunch time. Tight fit situation. You'd think Clemson go for it, but instead they're going for the field goal. So defensively you want to get pressure on him, but you do not. You do not want to let him fake it and pick up a first. Richardson from 27 yards out. Knocks it through to give Clemson a one-point lead. And you go back to that missed extra point earlier by Maryland. The extra point that was blocked. It's Clemson by one when we return. Clemson taking a one-point lead courtesy of that 27-yard field goal just moments ago with 4.07 to play in the third period. Good-looking drive by the Clemson Tigers to jam it down Maryland's throats using Priester. It's the old-time tested offense that Tommy West has run, just using a big offensive lineman and a fullback to bang away and let Priester run through it. So now Maryland trying to regroup here and trying to get back in this thing. The Terrapin coaches told us this week that Maryland always seems to have, for some reason, a lull at the beginning of the third period. They just had it. Weren't able to move the ball offensively, give it back to Clemson. Clemson comes down right away and scores. One-point ball game now. Ron Vanderlyn has got to get his offense and has to get it going. They've been unable to throw the ball this afternoon effectively. They moved the ball on the ground with Jordan and Rodgers, and the offense set to take the field after this kickoff. Vitala taking a knee five yards deep. Well, tomorrow at 3 Eastern and 2 Pacific, 2 Central, pardon me, uh, the PGA Tour Championship preview on ABC. They pick at the top money winners on the tour, and then MLS Cup 97, the championship game between the Colorado Rapids and D.C. United. More than 50,000 expected for that. D.C. United, of course, the defending champ. That'll be down at RFK Stadium. And then we got the golf preview. Boy, the wind's kicked, out, kicked up out in Las Vegas. Tiger Woods had a 77. It's cooled off a little bit since maybe a great start on the tour. Jordan in the backfield. Complete, incomplete in and out of the hands of Walton. Dangerous pass thrown into coverage, but perfectly thrown. It hit between the ones. He let the ball get too close to his body and it hit his chest plate. That ball is perfectly thrown. Watch Cummings. Cummings this time gets a three-step drop, good set, and steps into it. Now watch. He gets it over the linebacker, under the corner, and it hits him right in the chest plate and bounce off. Walton has to make that catch. Walton coming off an elbow injury. You see that left elbow wrapped up a lot. Still no excuse for dropping that pass, though. Second down and 10. have it so once again in the third quarter Maryland 
self-destructing. You know, it's almost like a time bomb. You have a feeling it's going to happen. You have a feeling Maryland will self-destruct. You just don't know when. Mond Wilson making the fumble recovery for the Tigers. These are things that happen to young teams. I mean, here is your freshman now. Watch. The freshman seems to stop right here while he's getting the handoff and never gets it while he's trying to cut. He sees the guy coming on the outside on the edge, and he just drops the football. Too much happening. The freshman's head's up. He's looking at where he's going rather than making connection to getting the ball and securing that first. And now Timmy Clemson working with a short field, starting from the 17-yard line, Raymond Priester. Keeps those legs driving and moving down to the 12-yard line. Ogle making the stop, number 32 for Maryland. Boy, Priester's special. He's got those strong legs, just push the pop. But these guys right here cannot panic. You know, Clemson had those five first downs on the very first drive, but since then, they've had only four first downs on the next eight possessions. So the defense had adjusted, had made plays, and just because they're backed up doesn't mean there's cause for panic. Second down and five. Green came into the game just needing one touchdown pass to become the all-time school leader. They run the counter, though. Priester tripped up back at the 16-yard line. Ogle again in on the tackle. Well, great penetration. See, the defensive line got in there, Barton got in there, and Ogle by that time could trip him up. He was already stumbling. There was a lot of pressure on him. He had to readjust. Now watch the push by the black jerseys and watch the white jerseys back up. All right? Now hold on. Here's the line of scrimmage right here. Already you got one, two, and you got another one coming and a guy coming off here. So the pressure is already there. So he's going to readjust. And by the time he comes, he's tripped up, and Ogle takes him down. Well, last time, Tim, the Maryland defense held. It's third down and eight. Horn lined up to the short side of the field. Green to pass under pressure and sacked back at the 26-yard line. Barton leading the charge along with Hicks. Once again, Maryland's defense responds. So Richardson comes in to kick a field goal. Good play action. Here comes Hicks off the corner, number 90, this way. But he's looking for anything coming back. So Barton comes up, then Hicks says, I'm turning it loose, too. And they both go get him. They flushed him out like a bird out of the brush. Richardson from 42 yards out. And he nails it right down Main Street. David Richardson gives Clemson a 13 to 9 lead. More importantly, give them the, they give them that four points, which means Maryland now field goal won't help them. They've got to put it in the end zone. They look at Horn, number seven. He's been quiet today, but he's wide open over the middle. They never see him. Why? Because of the, the pressure by Hicks and Ogle. But on the play of the sack, he was wide open. You know, one thing that Maryland's defense has done well today, Tim, I think, is contain Neil and Green, who is dangerous when you allow him to scramble. But that time, they contained him, and they've done that this afternoon. I think Neil Green is most dangerous when he's scrambling on a pass play because of the... Uh, that's why we saw Hicks, number 90. Nobody touched him, but he kind of held up because he was afraid he was going to move, and he wanted to keep containment. It was only when Barton came in and made him rearrange that then Hicks jumped in. Dylan Green telling me yesterday at the hotel he does not want to be home for the holidays. Wants to go to a bowl game. They've got to win four of their next five to become bowl eligible. Well, they're certainly capable of that. I mean, if and buts, it could and should have. You know, they're eight plays away from being unbeaten and definitely had Florida State on the ropes. Richardson kicking off. That field goal just moments ago of 42 yards was a career long for him. When you look at teams and you look at the weakness, this is one of them right here. Special teams for Clemson have been a nightmare. And this one goes out of the end zone. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. Tim Dwight can do on the ground, a little reverse, but then Dwight tosses this one 64 yards to Damon Gibson. He takes it in for the touchdown as Iowa rolls over Indiana. Indiana did not score a touchdown in the month of October. Mark, back to you.
Dwight. He's one of the most exciting players in the country. Timmy Dwight's certainly one of the most athletic guys. You think of Woodson out of Michigan, you think of Tim Dwight, you think of Bishop at Kansas State, but he certainly is one of the most athletic in the country. A track guy, too, a sprinter. Cummins completes the pass to the tight end. Number 92, Mike Hull. And it's one yard short of a Maryland first down. Cummings firing with authority that time. Fox making the tackle for Clemson. Told you Hull had nine receptions coming into the game. Nine for the year. That was it. That's already his second catch in this game. Gives him a big target at 6'6", 250 pounds. Another one of those freshmen. Everywhere you look, there are freshmen. There are 11 freshmen playing on both sides of this ball from Maryland that are getting significant playing time. Rodgers and Kalapinski out of the eye. Second down and one for Maryland. Rodgers has the Maryland first down at the 32-yard line. Clock stops with under a minute to play now in the third quarter. All game, we've been looking for the matchup of Walton going against Evans. 6-3 receiver against a 5-6-and-a-half cornerback. Maryland wanted to attack it. Clemson knew they would. So far, Maryland hasn't been able to do it because of the pressure coming from the linebackers. Cummings can never get a good long drop to look deep. He's been sacked three times. He hadn't been able to even peek down deep at his wide receivers. Timmy, this time he's matched up Walton is against Allen on first and ten. Cummings throws the out complete. And another first down. Moses Cruz with his first reception of the day, but there's and a flag a, on the play. And another flag. And it looks like it's going to be against Maryland. So Maryland gets a big play, but again hurts themselves. This one will come back. You know, Cruz has been almost conspicuous by his absence today. They haven't gone to him much. An eligible receiver down field on the offense. Five yard penalty and repeat first down. Had a lineman release early. So it'll be third and 16. There's a look at Cruz, who came into this game as the team's leading receiver on the season. And another freshman, Tim, as you mentioned moments ago, 5'11", 172 pounds. They play eight true freshmen, five of which started times. First and 15. Barely get the playoff. Cummings. Oh, a screen well set up. Here's Rodgers. Out to the 33-yard line. That stuff closed up quickly defensively. One of the interesting plays that we've seen out of Maryland, they had both tailbacks in the game. They had Lamont Jordan and Buddy Rodgers. So they send Jordan to the right, and then they'll throw back to Rodgers. All right, see, now there's the fake pitch to Jordan. But they still roll that way. Now they set up the screen, and here's Rodgers, who was hanging down low in the fullback spot. Well designed. It could fall on the shoulders of Jordan and Rodgers and Cummings as Maryland trails by four. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back for the start of the fourth quarter. Clemson leading Maryland 13 to nine. Maryland with the ball on its own 33 yard line. Second down and long, nine to go. There's a look at the starting quarterback, Brian Cummings. Flag down. Well, you hate to start the fourth quarter with a flag flying down. Umpire comes over, the, the referee and the umpire talking. Referee, I think, was going to call it against Maryland. The umpire came running in and said, hold on. Disconcerting defensive signals on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty and second down. Well, that's, that's what playing. I was talking about. Now, the referee stands behind the offense. He saw the offense move, so he throws a flag. The umpire stands behind the defense, right in the middle by the linebackers. He comes running in and says, hey, they're calling out signals trying to get Maryland to jump all sides. You don't see it called very often, but that's unsportsmanlike, and they throw the flag on it saying it's illegal. They can't call those signals like it's a hut count and make the lineman jump. Now we understand. Second down and four. 
Quick three step drop. Cummings completes the pass to Cruz at midfield and a first down for the Terps. Evans making the tackle. Moses Cruz makes his first catch of the game. Encouraging sign from Maryland. Here's 5'11", 180 pounder now. They're playing him soft. They're giving him 14 yard cushion. So he takes it and just sharply cuts outside. That's a good play by Maryland to take what the defense gives him, picks up the first down, moves the chains, and gives Maryland great field position by midfield. Cruz, a forgotten man earlier in the game with two catches now. Play fake by Cummings under pressure. Almost had it picked off. Let's go to New York, John Saunders for this Big Ten update. John. Indeed, Mark, Northwestern against Ohio State. Northwestern coming off the win against Michigan State, but Stanley Jackson zips this one in. Ten yards to Dee Miller, his second touchdown catch of the game. And the Buckeyes lead 28-6. Mark. Well, that one almost picked off by Carswell. You know, this is the situation where Cummings tries to do too much. He's trying to make a play here. Just throw it away. You're in great shape. It's first down. He's running out of bounds. He tries to throw across his body, and really, Carswell should have made the interception. Badly thrown pass. Poor mistake by Cummings. Second and 10. On the out, complete to Walton at the 43-yard line. The stop by Michael Allen. So it'll be third down and about two or three to go for Maryland. Maryland Terrapins now starting to take advantage of Clemson's weakness. They know the Clemson corners have not been able to cover man, so now they're going after him. It'll be third down and four. Cummings getting rid of it quickly. Lewis Johnson had a stopwatch on him, said he threw it within 2.1 seconds. You've got to do that when they're coming with blitz packages and they're getting a good push from the defensive line. Another play fake. Complete to Rogers. He has the first down. Brought down at the 33-yard line. Buddy Rogers with the reception. Carswell on the tackle, but an 11-yard pickup and a first down. Every time Brian Cummings comes up to the line, they give him options. He has the chance to check off to read what the defense is doing. That time the, Mer the Clemson defense came up and pressed on the corners, played man. He's got the ability. Van der Linden gives him the ability to come up, read the defense, and check into another option. That's what he did that time and made it pay. Cummings is such an emotional player. Plays with a lot of fire. The Waggle fires incomplete. We talked about Cummings playing with a lot of emotion and fire, but you've got to use that in a positive way. Here's what the coach had to say about it. Most plays, Brian's going to come to the line of scrimmage with two plays, and he's going to have a best look play. Um, there are some defenses, when they're bringing all out pressure, we'll give Brian one to three audibles that he has a choice that he can go to. One of the choices that he's liked so far was Walton, but right now he's got Rodgers and Jordan, the two running backs in the ballgame at the same time. Take the counter under pressure, the screen. Rodgers tripped up at the 34-yard line. Good pursuit defensively. Anthony Simmons making the tackle for Clemson. Boy, again, they tried to use that misdirection and throw Lamont Jordan. Jordan threw a block that let him get the pass off, but just barely. Now, here's the misdirection. There's the play action to Jordan. He gets a block that allows Cummings to throw it. But see the missed block right up there by 71? That's Ward. That's a senior. Pat Ward has to make that block for that play to work, and he missed his block. Simmons has been the top tackler for Clemson the last four weeks and five of the last six. Third down and long, 11 to go. They need a play from Cummings, and he goes up top for Walton. Incomplete. So close, but it's dropped. I don't know how he dropped it. It was good coverage by Allen and Fox, but the ball was perfectly thrown, and Walton had it. Got to take another look at this one. Oh, watch this. Now, he's splitting defenders. Number 10 is Allen, the cornerback. All right, now the safety will come over. He throws it in between the two, and look at this. I mean, it's right in his hands. Allen did get his right hand on it. Allen got his right hand and swatted it down, but look at the pressure that Cummings was under. Knew he was going to get hit. This is still what we talk about. Dingle, 52, had a beat on him. 
Cummings knew he was going to get hit, but he's tough. He stood in there and threw a perfect pass. Now, Timmy Kopka coming in to attempt the field goal from 51 yards out. His long is 47. And the clock incredibly runs out on Maryland. Well, hold on now. They were trying to call a timeout, and I think they got it. Now, one official was ready to call the, the delay of game. There was a flag back at the 20. Delay of game he didn't get on the, the timeout. offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. That stings if you're Maryland. Vanderlyn is irate. Well, I don't blame him. Evans, the holder, was trying to call timeout, and they didn't see him. They didn't give him the timeout. Instead, threw the flag. Vanderlyn is really upset. And that pushes it from a 51-yard field goal to potentially a 56-yarder. You know, I agree with Vanderlyn in here. I think the holder, Evans, got up and called timeout before the play clock expired, and none of the officials saw it. A split second so costly for Maryland. Doesn't make any difference now. Penalties, penalties done. Moot point. And now they'll punt it. It's been like that, though. You know, a drop pass here. Pat Ward misses the block. Miss block. Delay a game. Just little things add up, and eventually you lose. Sure has. Russell Edwards now standing on his own 46. It bounce. It'll be down at about the six yard line. Good special teams work that time by the Terps. Troy Davidson Television time. downing that ball. Cummings put it on the mark last time, but Walton couldn't grab it. We'll be back. 13 to 9. Clemson leads Maryland in the fourth quarter. This is a crucial play. Right in here is the holder. He's trying to call timeout. Play clock's rolling down. Watch him. See his head? Now he's trying to get their attention. Timeout, timeout. Now he looks to that side. Timeout. Nobody sees him. Nobody sees him. Delay a game. They move Maryland back. Maryland had to punt and give it back to the Tigers. And Clemson now with the ball on its own six yard line. Priester behind Green. Offered in motion. This is Raymond Priester. That Maryland defense has really picked it up a notch. Simmons and Ogle making the tackle that time for Maryland. Yeah, the Terps have really made some adjustments after that first drive. Give Clemson a lot of credit, though, in this ballgame. I mean, it's a team that just continues to plug, continues to take advantage of mistakes, and, and right now in control of the ballgame, leading 13-9 with 12 and a half minutes to go. Now it's up to Maryland to make some stops, to take advantage of some things to get back in this thing. Maryland's defense has come up with two turnovers, two interceptions already today. Witherspoon and Priester are out of the eye this time. Green with a nice play fake. This guy's a magician, folks. You can't give him an inch of daylight. Priester, pardon me, Green out to the 20 in a first down, picking up 12. Well, we say he's most dangerous on a pass play when he starts to scramble. And if you're a linebacker, you know you cannot leave your feet. Ever leave your feet. All right, here comes Nelon Green. Play action. All right, now watch this. All right, you've got... Barton coming up, he left his feet. You can't do that. That allows him to go and pick up the first down. You've got to stay under control. Remember earlier we said aggressive, controlled aggression. First down and 10. <laughs> Still on his feet. And close to another Clemson first down at the 30-yard line. Henry Baker making the tackle, but Priester picked up 11 and gets another first down for Clemson. All right, load them up, fellas. This is where you can tell an experienced team. Clemson's got the lead. Now they want to melt the clock and get out of here with a win. So now they'll just start jamming it. Come up with a play. You've got Neilan Green, who's a senior. A little pump fake put Barton in the air. Now you come back with Priester. He's a senior. He just jams that ball, carries tacklers, and moves the chains again. Green is 2-0 against his buddy, Brian Cummings, his Pee Wee football friend. Priester again, picking up about five that time on first down. This is Clemson football. This is their signature football. 
tough running and Priester today rushing it 26 times for a total of 130 yards. So Tim, they talked about giving the Priest Priester the ball a lot and they're doing it. Yeah, they sure did. They came in with the goal. Tommy was telling us, as was uh, Steve Ensing the offensive coordinator, they wanted to get it to him 20, 25 times today. They have done that. I mean, this guy is an outstanding player. He's done everything he can for the team. He's even changed positions. They put him back to his normal position and he shows that he is a tremendous talent. the first wave of tacklers and into the secondary another first down at the 49 yard line for the Tigers Sanders and Baker making the tackle but Priester tacks on 14 more yards to his total yeah the fans sit back and they see a two and five record for Maryland but they say how close are they well I'll show you stop it here's uh, Ogle right here 32 he's in the backfield already and he'll make a hit but he doesn't wrap his arms he's not under control Priester breaks it and carries a first down that's how close they are Maryland's close to being a decent team, but they have too many breakdowns, and it's those breakdowns that beat them. First down and 10 near midfield. Priester with a gaping hole in the offensive line. And they move the sticks again. Another Clemson first down. That's a popular refrain right now. What's the, what's the other thing the coaches told us? The coaches told us all week that they haven't had a fullback, and that's why the running game had to work. Boy, Weatherspoon is healthy again. He's got that bad knee. They had an off week. They get him back. He threw a crushing block on that last play. Just a simple iso play, Tim. He's still limping. He's not 100%, but golly, did he just stone the defensive player. The workhorse, Raymond Priester, down to the 31-yard line. Good blocking up front by the Tigers for Priester. Sanders making the tackle on the play. All of a sudden, Maryland looks tired, but watch this. Here comes Witherspoon. Let's see if he gets another block. He does. There's one. Get back on your feet. Takes Calcet. Puts him on his back. He's not 100%, but he's playing his heart out. An injured player down in the field. The Wisconsin can get a report when we come back. Stick around. In the Pac-10, Washington State against Arizona, and Ryan Leaf's squad is down by a touchdown, trying to lead him back. Toss across the middle on the blitz. Kevin McKenzie takes it 48 yards for the touchdown for Leaf, his 22nd touchdown pass this season, and it ties the game at 21 apiece. Mark, back to you. Team to come back, it's Mike Price of Washington State, one of the most charismatic coaches in the country. This drive started inside the Maryland 10. And in this drive, Priester has 51 yards on six carries. Maryland now has to stop, start thinking, all right, we've got to at least hold them to a field goal here so we can come back and give them a touchdown. Maryland with three timeouts remaining. It's Priester one more time. Tackled at the 28-yard line by Ogle. Sanders joined him on the tackle. No, but it's enough to move the chains and give Clemson a first down inside the 30. You know, Clemson came into this game averaging just 146 yards rushing. Last year, they led the ACC in rushing with 199 yards a game, and Priester has almost that much by himself today. So that puts the exclamation point on the point that they wanted to come in here running the football, and you know, they haven't thrown a whole lot today. Yeah, but it's not just Priester, the offensive line, and on this drive, they put the fullback right in front of them to lead him up in there. again down to the 24 Baker making the tackle and the clock running with eight and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter now I'll show you what I mean Bundren Halsey Gamble Roundtree these guys on the offensive line are all over 300 pounds they get the fullback jamming him up in there and so he's got four yards before he even starts running because that's when first contact is made and he takes the tackler back an extra yard and it brings up second and five. Tim, I would think that that, uh, that uh, Maryland defense would become a little bit fatigued now. They've been on the field a long time in the second half. Second down and seven. On the pitch, Brewster. Four. Look at him rumble down to the nine yard line. The initial hit was made about 10 yards ago. Yeah, Cliff Crosby is a 160-pound defensive back. He gets isolated on Priester, and I mean it's just a prayer. He gets run over. That's the old deer-in-the-headlights look, huh, Tim? Yeah, watch this. Now, everybody gets sucked in here. All right, now the 
pitch out. Now watch this. Stop. Here comes 25. He's 160 pounds. Now let's watch Priester go to work on him. And just keeps going. And now here he is back here. First and goal to go for Clemson. Priester. He got you there. And he took him into the end zone. Raymond Priester, nine yards. Touchdown, Clemson. Boy, give the Tigers a lot of credit on that drive. I mean, they just jammed it down the throats of the Maryland Terrapins. They just said, we are going to overpower you. Look at the fullback, 26 right here. That's a cut block. That makes it possible for him to get into the secondary. And then here's your little Cliff Crosby again. He's 160 pounds. So that's how far away Maryland is to play with the big boys. Timmy, that was akin. That drive was akin to the big bully kicking sand in the Pee Wee Herman guy's face on the beach. And there's the guy flexing his muscles, Raymond Priester, as Clemson pulls ahead 20 to 9. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by BASF. We don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. Married Hotels, Resorts and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Burger King, where you can get your burger's worth. And the NASDAQ Stock Market. Well, Raymond Priester's stock and the Clemson stock collectively rising after that last drive. Priester running it 83 yards. And look at the huge chunks that he got, 8.3 per pop on nine consecutive carries. Surgery on that Maryland defense. We've got to credit the offensive line too. Richardson to kick off. Not not in a panic situation yet for the Maryland Terrapins. Now they're going against a, a tough defense, but they've been able to move the ball on them effectively. Still have a seven and a half minutes to play. They need two scores, but they've got to change what they were doing. They were going running back, running back. Now they've got to go wide receiver, tight end. It's all back deep for Maryland. With a nice return out to the 41 yard line and Cummings has to go to work. Lewis Johnson, what's up with his throwing times? Well, I tell you, the Maryland coach has had a goal for Brian today in all season. They want him to get rid of the ball from the snap until the time he throws in 2.5 seconds. Now, his last offensive series, listen to this, Cummings threw seven passes, four complete, three incomplete. Of the four complete passes, he was 1.7, 2.1, 2.5, and 2.5. He had success. Of the three incomplete passes, 5.7 seconds. There was a scramble rollout there, 3.1, and then 2.3 seconds, and that was the drop touchdown pass by Walton. So when he does what the coaches ask him, getting rid of the ball in 2.5 seconds, he has success. There's another one right there, Lewis. 1.9 seconds. He throws to Cruz, has a completion. Maryland's got the first down. Pickup of nine on the play. He doesn't fool around. It's a quick five-step drop. He sets, sees his receiver, lets it go. 1.9 second, complete. Boom, first down. Or close to it, second down and about a yard. Clemson's going to be bringing some defensive pressure now, pinning back their ears a little bit, knowing that Cummings has to throw. They run it. Jordan has the first down at the Tiger 48-yard line. Mon Wilson making the tackle was 6.40 to play. Maryland with three timeouts remaining. Well, and the clock stops every time they move the chains, so they'll move the chains. Maryland's got to get a sense of urgency, though. Once they put it back in play, like right now, the whistle blows. Cummings has to get them in and out of the huddle. There has to be a great sense of urgency right now. See, they're wasting too much time. They've got to be in a hurry up right now. Cruz comes out of the game. Walton is split wide to the top of your screen. Now he's in motion. Jordan making it down to the 47-yard line. Carswell making the tackle. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded over $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Flag down on the play. Yeah, but see, Maryland picked up one yard on that play and yet used 24 seconds off the 25-second play clock. You can't do that. It's not a fair trade. And a holding penalty to boot. You had the clock stop with the first down. 
All right, while they're moving the chains and getting the ball Blocking set. Blocking the back, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and repeat first down. See, while they're doing that, moving the chains, getting the ball set, you've got to get them up to the line of scrimmage and ready to go. So you, you pick up a yard, you use the clock, now you get a penalty, now you move it back all the way to the 42-yard line. Now it's first down and forever, and you've wasted time. And clock's their enemy. Under six minutes to play now. See, that's a young football team that is not really managing a clock well. There's the play clock, bottom left of your screen. Keep an eye on it, see how much they're using. Out of the backfield, complete to Jordan. And Jordan brought down by Evans that time. Stops the clock with 5.40 to play. You get the feeling that Jordan runs hard. He could rock your world. <laughs> that time he went up against Evans, who we told you before is 5'6 and a half, 173 pound walk on. And Jordan really made him just pay the price. Not running like a guy with a bruised knee, Tim. Not no, at all. I want you to watch 15. Now he's going against this little guy. And once he makes the catch, he's going to turn it up. And he's not going to put any moves on him. He's going to try to run him over. Boom. See? And puts him, puts him right to the ground. Here's Jordan again on the counter, and this time stuffed up behind the line of scrimmage at the 48. Raymond White from Clinton, Mississippi, making the tackle along with Simmons. Yeah, and a lot of the people that are still here, a lot of people are leaving, but a lot of people that are still here are starting to boo because they see Maryland's not using the clock well, and they aren't throwing the football downfield. Well, they've got some dangerous deep threats. One of them, Kendrick Walton. But Clemson also has speed on defense, like that number 41 guy. Well, now it's third and almost 15. You know they're going to pass, so they're going to come with heat and try to get some coverage. They come on a blitz. Cummings eludes the initial rush. Boy, Simmons made an outstanding play. He missed them the first time around on the blitz, came back, pursued him from behind, and made the tackle at the 50-yard line. That's why he's everybody's All-American. Yes, and Cummings doesn't do a great job here. He does a great job of avoiding the pressure like he did before. All right, stop it right here. All right, he's got a blocker in front of him. He knows he's got to get a first down. Everybody's covered. See the coverage up there? So go ahead and try to run it. Maryland uses a timeout. They have two remaining, as does Clemson. We're going to take a timeout. Clemson Tigers leading 20 to 9. And coming into this game, it was paramount that they win. Having to win four of its remaining five games to become bull eligible. Yeah, and Tommy West is a guy who's been there now several years. He's already rebuilding his program, has the players he wants. He knows uh, how to win and what it takes to win now. He's gone through hard times at Clemson on and off the field. He's been very successful late in the season. It was this game against Maryland last year that turned it around. They went on a five-game winning streak. He's trying to do that now. Fourth and 11, and Maryland has to go. Walton juggles it, hangs on, and has a first down at the 36-yard line. Nothing has been easy for Walton today. No, but that play is huge. Maryland all of a sudden out of the ball game on fourth down and forever makes a first down with four and a half minutes to go. They're still alive. Oh, they got him under the safeties. They were in a soft zone. Walton found the seam, the crease, the open spot, and great pass by Cummings. Cruz and Walton split to the left of Cummings. First and ten. Clemson blitzing. Cruz complete. And he's necktied at the 29-yard line by Carswell. Halloween comes early, folks, starting tomorrow night on ABC. The wonderful world of Disney, Steve Gutenberg, checks into a very spooky hotel in Tower of Terror. The Devil's Child, that's tomorrow night on ABC. Now Maryland going hurry up. No huddle offense. Get him back to the line of scrimmage. Comes out of the shotgun. Jordan tiptoes out of bounds right at the first down marker at the 26-yard line. Simmons pushing him out. Gives him a little patch. It's a nice play. Simmons has been sideline to sideline today. And he's showing the effects of that right now. His lungs on fire. Close to a first down. I believe they're going to bring the chains out and try to measure it. Clock at 338. Maryland still needs two scores. So they need to push it into the end zone here, something that hadn't been easy for them. One touchdown against Clemson since 1992. Then they've got to do the onside kick, get the ball back, and come down and score again. Yeah, they missed that extra point earlier in the game. Here's the measurement. 
inside about a foot less than a foot I'd still go downfield knowing you can always come back on fourth down and get that foot or try to get that foot they need to get it in the end zone quickly both teams with two timeouts remaining Cummings has got to start pitching those are the diehards. They're going to be here when Vandy turns this program around at Maryland. A lot of people that feel this place is a sleeping giant. Of course, their parents don't want them to hear that. <laughs> they want to get him out of here in four years. And Cummings keeps it himself for the Maryland first down. He'll stop the clock, move the chains with 3.35 to play in the fourth right. quarter. But with the chain moving now, he's got to get him up to the line of scrimmage right now. He can't waste time like he did before. Lock starts to roll. Now he's got to get the ball snap. Good job. Cummings has time. Complete to Cruz. Cruz out of bounds right at the first down marker at the 14-yard line. Stops the clock with 319 to play. Time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights. John Saunders, Todd Blackledge. Busy Saturday afternoon in college football. 3.19 to play right here. Clemson leading by 11. Each team with two timeouts remaining. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brand and Lewis Johnson. Maryland trying a frenetic comeback right now. Well, if Maryland scores, you'd think they'd go for two, which would get them an opportunity to be within three. Then things could be interesting. Look at the current drive. First and ten. Cummings takes the sack back at the 20. All right, he's got to get him up. You can't worry about the sack now. Clock still rolls. You're getting down to near three minutes. Dingle making the tackle. They've got to get it off quickly. Walton in the slot. On the blitz, and they sack him again. Who else? Simmons. I'm telling you, he is a heat-seeking missile. They lose 10 yards on that one and are forced now to call a timeout. Yeah, and not only that, but they waited to call the timeout. And it's not Vanderlyn that's problem. Vandy's trying to get the timeout. He's frustrated because he's calling it. They don't do it. They shouldn't even have to look to the sidelines to see it. If you're managing the clock, you're running the team on the field. You've got to know you've got to stop that clock. A huge hill to climb for Ron Vanderlyn when we come back. 2.41 to play. Clemson leading by 11, and you can almost hear the cheers coming from the Esso Club down in Clemson, South Carolina, one of the favorite places down there to watch a college football game for the home team fans. Yeah, my old friend Bob Bradley's up here from Clemson, and Tim Bure, they're all getting excited, ready for a nice trip back to Clemson, South Carolina. This one not over, third and 26. Complete to Cruz. Cruz out of the 14-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down and nine. Clock continues to move now under two and a half minutes to play. Carswell making the tackle for Clemson. Maryland in its hurry-up offense. And they're going to try and kick a field goal here. Well, they need a field goal, and they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Kopka coming onto the field. Doesn't matter when you get them pretty smart play actually from 32 yards out and he pushed it right ball game over coming into the game he was four of five but that miss hurts that miss ends the game I mean, you hate to put it on him because there were a lot of uh, breakdowns, but I mean, that's how frustrated it is for that man. He's got to he's got to stay up. He can't get frustrated. He's got to know that it's eventually going to turn. It's like that boulder he was talking about earlier. You just have to keep hitting it with a sledgehammer. 
One day soon, he hopes it'll break. But not today. The Tigers have been solid. Certainly not spectacular today, but solid as a rock. They run the ball, giving it to Priester again. You know, Clemson has attempted only one pass, one pass, Tim, here in the second half. This is a huge win for Clemson. They now go to four and three, and the rest of their schedule, they match up quite well. And they have Carolina down in Clemson, South Carolina at Death Valley. So it looks like a pretty good run for Clemson coming up. And the Maryland Terrapins now, they dropped to two and six. Clemson's not that far off from... You know, having only one loss. No, the yeah. Maryland game, four turnovers in the second half really cost them, but they lost to Georgia Tech in a close ball game. A close one to the hands of Florida State. Yeah, and so if you're a Clemson fan, you look back and you say, all right, well, look, Priester's running well again, and the guys are getting healthy. Well, next week, ABC's Rocho travels to Tallahassee, North Carolina State, led by the conference's leading rusher, Tremaine Stevens. Dangerous wideout Tory Holt faces the nation's number one rated defense. Number three ranked Seminoles have exploded on both sides of the ball with the emergence of sophomore wideout Peter Warwick. He is spectacular making catches like that, leading the ACC in receiving yardage. Don't forget Florida State plays Virginia tonight on ESPN in Charlottesville. Uh, look at our menu for next Saturday. The Big Ten game will be Ohio State against Michigan State. Losers today at the hands of Michigan. Oklahoma, Nebraska, and NC State, Florida State, as we just told you, and USC against number seven, Washington. Don't forget to call your cable operator. The game's available on pay-per-view. That's a pretty good lineup right there. Maryland takes time out with 43 seconds left in the game. All right, now let's take a look at some upcoming programming here on ABC. Clemson's ready to put this one in the history books. 20 to 9, our score with 43 seconds left. Fourth down for the Tigers. Laird punting. Maryland goes after it, and Laird gets off a fantastic punt. Driving Russell way back to the 17-yard line, a 53-yard punt. Well, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are, well, this one's a no-brainer. Raymond Priester from Clemson. 36 rushes today for 204 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And Kendall Ogle from Maryland with 10 tackles and one interception. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. You know, Tim, we've had a great visit being able to come here to the uh, area at College Park, Maryland. Had a great dinner at your house a couple nights ago. Uh, it was my pleasure to have you over. And uh, big game in the area here today, Walter Johnson High School. Defeating Blair 18 to 8. I wish I had seen it. Cummings throws one up. And it's complete. The Hail Mary is answered down at the 36 yard line. Nice reception by Doug Patterson, a pickup of 46 yards. It's one of those things where you really look for the tip. It comes off the defender, and he's just standing there. It's usually the rebound man that gets it. Too little too late, though, for Maryland as they do a clock play. He's talking about Walter Johnson defeating Blair today in high school action. And I know that there's a very popular, very talented football player in the area by the name of <laughs> Kevin Brandt. I haven't seen him play. I don't know. <laughs> we didn't see him today. Your son, 15 carries today, 124 yards, couple of touchdowns, 200 plus all-purpose yards. Just another day at the office for Jeff. 200 special team yards, and here's Cummings going up top into the end zone. Interse and it's picked off by Allen. So he had almost 500 yards all-purpose. Sorry, I missed it. Got his athletic talent from his mom, huh? No question about that. <laughs> How'd you get all that stuff? Uh, we have sources. 
15 seconds to play here, and Tommy West crew will head back to Clemson, South Carolina with a W. Improving to four and three overall in the season and two and three in ACC play. Well, for Ron Vanderlyn, it continues to be frustrating. He knows how close he is. He's got some players that are really playing well. Other guys are not, and uh, they make mistakes, and that's all being young. But for Clemson, well, once again, they're getting healthy against Maryland and will continue now as they, they start to get healthy and look down the road toward another bowl game. And 4-3 uh, and three now, and the home stretch looks pretty strong here for Tommy West. Big fan of Tommy West. He really has fought through some tough times down there in Anderson County, on and off the field with some of his players, and he kept things together, kept things in perspective, worked hard, and uh, he's got a nice program. Yeah, really brought things under control towards the last half of last season. And with the win, they improved to four and three. Courtesy of that guy right there, Raymond Priest. Yeah, I was going to say, when you come into a game like this, you knew the guys that would uh, were supposed to start. Now, Priester's fought through a tough year. They've moved him around. He hadn't had the yards after having two back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Comes in here, and he has a great day today. I mean, he goes over 200 yards and 30-some carries. And they gave the ball to him early and often, 36 times today. Had a couple of touchdowns. Conversely, Tony Horn was kind of quiet today. Well, they didn't throw the ball that much. And I was going to say what I like about the team is the other guys, they saw what was hot and stayed with it and didn't worry about it. Neilan Green's another one. He gave it all to Priester. Lewis Johnson is with our Chevy MVP. That's right, Raymond. It was a slow start for your offense, but in the end for you, 33 carries, 195 yards, a solid day. More than solid, huh? Right, uh, well, we knew we, we concentrated a lot last week on running the ball, and we came out today trying to get our running game on track, and, you know, I think for the first time this year, we did. This week has proven to be a pivotal week for Clemson throughout the last few years. What made the difference? What made it happen for you guys over the hump today? I think it was just determination, you know. Uh, we had a week off last week, and, and we really worked hard as a team to get better. You know, uh, we made a lot of mistakes in the uh, weeks before. We tried to come out this week and not make the same mistakes, you know, try to improve as a team, and I think we did that today. Now, as you look forward to next week, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, we're, we're happy with this win, you know. We're going to uh, go back home, you know, practice and try to correct the mistakes we made tonight. And, you know, I think our confidence level is up right now. So, you know, that, that's a plus for us. And we're just going to try to go out and do the same thing next week. You could say this is a game you're supposed to win, but you've got a long stretch ahead of you now. Huh? It's, 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 it's a lot of work ahead. No doubt. You know, everybody in, in the ACC is, is, uh, has great competition and uh, they're playing to win. So it's going to make our game better. So we're just going to have to come out and play hard every week. Fantastic job. Uh, thanks for your time, and we'll see you. All right, thank you. Back up to you guys. All right. Clemson went ones against ones all week in practice and during the week off. Back to fundamentals, back to basics, and back to Clemson football, running the ball, giving it to Raymond Priester 36 times. Pretty simple formula, and it worked. Final thoughts, Tim Brandt. Well, I'm surprised he wasn't out there singing the praises of his offensive line and his fullback because they really came to the party today, and they opened things up. He was a warrior, but he had a lot of help, but they're going to need him down the stretch. And a competitive ACC. Clemson wins 20-9. Thrifty Carlino Post Game Report coming up next.